What's good, YouTube? Happy Pool 92 here, back again, once again. And today, people, today, we are here for the extra bonus episode of the Blaze Black Egg Lock, whatever you want to call it. This is our egg hatching video. Um, a lot of you guys ask for it. Normally, this is what happens at the end of an egg lock. Because we have so many extra eggs left over, we're just going to go ahead and hatch them and see what's inside all of them. So make sure you keep an eye out see if your egg is included. Of course, everybody that sent in an egg, their eggs weren't included in the actual game, but... You never know. If if you if you didn't if you weren't one of those people that just downloaded the fucking game just to see if your egg was in there, I don't know why people do that. Like that takes away so much of the like the thrill of an egg lock. Like I include the game so you guys can play, and then people tell me like, oh, I downloaded it and looked through all the eggs in the PC, and my egg is not there. So fuck you, nappy. I'm just like, why would you do that? That ruins the entire thing. Like it's anyways, whatever. Um, so yeah, so see if your eggs in here. If it's not, then I apologize, but. I mean, everyone knew that all the eggs weren't going to fit to begin with, but it took me three and a half hours to hatch all these eggs, you guys. Um, I think what I'm going to try and do, even though I said I'm just going to take like the general ones, I think I'm just going to do it the traditional sense and just scroll through the comment section and answer questions as I go. Um, but because it's three and a half hours, we should be done with all the comments before then, so the video will probably end up being sped up a little bit. But it is what it is! So, getting into this, let's go ahead and start. I don't know, what, I don't know why I got all like... Hyped up and excited there. I mean, let's 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 just do it. Let's just get into it. I got I got a um, which what the hell is this called? Hell's the shit call. I got some Dr Pepper here. So if you hear me take a sip or the the cup in the background, it's just because I'm gonna be talking for like three hours. So it is what it is. Anyways, so let's get into it. The first question that I see here is from. Oh god, and if I mispronounce anybody's name, I apologize to <laughs> Kazimieras Bipkus, or whatever the hell your name is. Nappy, what is your favorite song? Um, I don't have, well, I'm gonna go ahead and say just for G, just for GP, and people ask me what is, what does GP mean? GP is general purpose. Just for general purpose, or general purposes, just for GP, I'm gonna go ahead and say that September by Earth, Wind & Fire is my favorite song. Just because, I mean, I like music, I love music so much, and I listen to so many different types of music. Like, a lot of people, I guess you could say, like, I primarily listen to, like, hip-hop, rap, R&B. But, I mean, I'll sit here and bust out anything from, like, uh, Benny Benassi to, uh... I'm trying to think of some, like, some, some extremes to music I listen to. Um... I'll listen to like Benny Benassi and then like Snoop Dogg the next day and then Drake the next day and then like Adele the day after that. So you know what I mean? It's like I listen to a whole wide variety of music. I pretty much listen to anything except for like hardcore like metal just because it's like I need, for me, for me, I need something with a beat and a melody. Something that I can sing along with or like rap along with or something like that. That's, that's the type of music that I like. So if it's just like noise. I can't get with that. But anyways, it is what it is. Um, so yeah, I guess if, if I had to choose just one song, period, I would go with September by Earth, Wind & Fire. You just can't beat it. Next one comes from XX Sabermaster. Nappy, who is your favorite WWE superstar and why? Also, have you got WWE 2K14 yet? Um, I'd probably say my first reaction would probably be just Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle is my favorite WWE superstar. Um, I also like The Rock a lot, but I feel like if I had to choose between the two of them, like which one would I want to see come back to WWE, it would be Kurt Angle. Just because I feel like Kurt Angle's matches are a lot more intense. Like, um, and I, I do know, I do know, before you before even comment, I do know all about the, the, the stuff. He's in TNA, I can just go watch him there, and he's supposedly supposed to be coming back to WWE, and yada, 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 yada. But the reason I like Kurt Angle more is because he's like a decent mat wrestler. He's a decent mat wrestler. He's a great mat wrestler, but at the same time, you know, you could put him in a match with like Mick Foley or somebody else, and he will still put on an amazing show in a hardcore match. So I just, I just love Kurt Angle. He is intensity. The three eyes. He's just, I, I, I love him. I love him. I love him. Have I gotten uh, WWE 2K14 yet? No, I did not. I, I thought about it. I really, really did. I thought about it and like maybe starting up a separate channel just for WWE 2K14 stuff. But I ended up putting the idea uh, out of my mind because I figured that if I did that, I'd probably do it for like a week. And then that would be about it, and I, I wouldn't want to play the game anymore, and I don't want to go through all that just, just for a game I don't want to play for a week. So, I never picked it up, is what it is. But I did play the, the WWE games for a very long time. I played the SmackDown vs. Raw ones. If you want to know, like, how far back I was playing, I think I picked it up, like, the year that they merged the two together. Because they used to have, like, different Raw and SmackDown games. I remember Brock Lesnar being on the cover of one of them. Um, but, my favorite mode was General Manager mode. So if that if that's any indication to how far back 
that is. I mean, I know it's it's like PlayStation 2 days or some shit like that. I don't know, but I, I used to love General Manager Mode. It made me really, really sad when they took it out, but it is what it is. Anyways, next one comes from Pokemon IX. What has been your favorite LP you have played? Um, Favorite LP, this is kind of hard to say. My favorite LP that I've done, I would say is Sacred Gold. The Sacred Gold egg lock we did, just everything about that, except for the fact that we lost, you know, spoiler alert, except for that fact, um, which I, I to this day, I kick myself in the ass for, just looking back at it, if I would've just trained my Pokemon right, or if I wouldn't have, like, opted out for a second team for Kanto, we could've easily smashed Blaine, especially with Bill, if I would've gone for, like, Earthquake over Waterfall or some shit, I could've smashed him, it's just a whole bunch of what-ifs now that I look back at it, but Sacred Gold was my favorite, um, I just liked everything about it, like, I liked the layout, um, the thumbnails are kind of just, eh. Um, the commentary I liked, uh, it's my favorite region, I mean, it's it's 4th gen, um, it's my favorite region, which is the 2nd gen, but it's its own 4th gen on the remakes, and it's a Yano hack, so it's even harder, it was just everything about Sacred Gold I enjoyed, and everyone seemed to enjoy it as well, um, but at the same time, I really, for whatever reason, I really, really like the Emerald Randomizer and like that we did. I, at the time, I didn't really think that much of it, but looking back, I, I, I just, I, I don't know, I just, it felt like, like a pure LP, like there wasn't... I don't know, that's the only way I can describe it, like, it's it's just, like, I don't know, it was just a good LP, I don't know what to say. Next one comes from Zach Farted, good night in there, he says, is your name, is your real name Nappy because in Australia diapers for babies are called nappies, I don't mean to be rude, but is it your real name? Obviously not, Nappy is not my real name, come on now, come on now, and I want to go ahead and dispel this whole thing about nappy meaning diaper, you guys live in Australia, you guys live in Britain. I live in the US. In your country, nappy means diaper. In my country, it doesn't. So obviously, when I made the channel name The King Nappy, I'm not making the name The King Diaper. So it's like, come on now, like, use some logic, use some common sense. I mean, I've had people, ever since I started my, like, even on my old channel, people used to tweet me all the time, did you know nappy means diaper? Yes, I know that. In my country, it doesn't mean that. So it's like, it's, it's like, I don't know why you would put, I don't know, I don't know. So, no, Nappy's not my real name, and no, it does not, to me, I didn't make my channel name with the idea of being diapers, so, yeah. Next one comes from Lolo Habi, says, throughout the whole series, which Pokemon was your favorite and why? I'm expecting second Scrafty. Um, Nifty was my favorite Pokemon, hands down. Um, Nifty was just amazing, that was my first time really putting in work with a Scrafty, I believe in the power of Scrafty now. And it's just, I mean, I know if you ever use a setup Pokemon and you were able to get set up, it'll sweep, but just the diversity that he has, you know, the Drain Punch to get the HP back, Crunch, Stab, Dark type move, and then on top of that you have the Ice Punch, it's just, he's like perfect to take out everything, so I just really enjoyed it, and plus he's got the natural bulk to it, so Nifty definitely, after that I'd probably say Pool or Bruce W, but Nifty definitely was my favorite. Next one comes from Nicholas Wilson. He says, what is your opinion on this game in general? Did you like it or not? Um, I liked it. Don't get me wrong. I liked it. Um, but I just feel like the fifth gen storyline is just... It's so... I feel like it tries too hard. That's the best way I can describe it. Like, it, it's almost to the point where it's just like it doesn't feel like a Pokemon game to me. Um, at the same time, I know it is a Pokemon game, I know that I'm playing Pokemon, I'm not, like, stupid or some shit, but, I don't know, there's no way I can really describe it, like, the other, like, the other games just felt like, it felt like a Pokemon game, but this one, it just feels like sometimes, maybe it's just because there's so much dialogue, there's so much text to it, it just feels like I'm going through the motions, you know, like, I have no attachment to the storyline, it's just, like, there, you know, I don't know, um, in general, this game, Blaze Black and Volt White and Blaze Black 2 and Volt White 2, are a lot harder than Sacred Gold and Storm Silver. Um, Sacred Gold was not this difficult to play. So, <laughs> I can tell you that much right now. Blaze Black is legit stressful. I will tell you that much right now. Because before, in like older games, if I went to go grind, I could sit there and like do 700 things and just grind, just button mash, and not have to worry about a Pokemon dying. While I'm grinding in this, if I misclick, like, grinding is just as intense as, like, the Alder and the Ann and Getz's episodes. If I misclick, a Pokemon will die. <laughs> you know? Like, I have to pay attention the entire time. So it's just, it's aggravating sometimes. So the difficulty level is, is a little um, extreme, in my opinion. But overall, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, next one comes from Anton Kraft Olberg. What are you going to do after this? I'm going to have an update video on Friday explaining all that. Pretty sure I said that in yesterday's episode, but... In one ear, out the other. 
Then the next question comes from Davy Van Eeklin. Uh, I'm sorry if I butchered that. What's your opinion on Dianchi? Um, Dianchi's probably my least favorite out of that trio. And I'm not saying that I hate her. I don't know why people equivalent least favorite and hate to the same thing. It's it's not the same thing. Um, probably my favorite is Hoopa, and then Volcanion, and then Dianchi, just based off of designs. I haven't used any of them yet, because they're not available, you know? <laughs> but I just like Hoopa's design. It's, it's I like it for the same reason I like Gengar, you know? It looks like, it looks sneaky, it looks like a trickster, it looks like it's up to no good. So, I like Hoopa. Volcanion I love, because it's water fire, and I've wanted a water fire type for the longest. And then Dianchi's just like, there. Just there. What has been your least favorite LP? What has your least favorite LP been so far? Mmm. That's kind of difficult for me to answer because. Mmm. <sighs> I mean. Least favorite LP. I'm gonna go ahead and say. Either Pokemon Sapphire, Pokemon Soul Silver, or Pokemon Advanced Adventures that I did over on Yaosh Alliance. Um, Advanced Adventures I felt like I did just to go through the motions. Um, Pokemon Sapphire and Soul Silver I just say those because like, uh, like looking back on them I think that they're so bad. Like they're still available. You guys can go watch them if you want, but. Um, I just feel like they're so bad, like compared to what I put out today. And of course, that's that's fine because you know you're gonna pro you're gonna develop and uh, progress as you go. But just looking back, I'm just like like I had that thought process of like, what the hell was I thinking? Like I, I go I go back and look at the the Soul Silver layout, and I'm like, what the fuck? Why did I what like what the hell? Why did I ever say I should do this? What thought process went through my head that said this was good? How come nobody told me this looks like ass? But it is what it is. Like like I said, just because they're old, that's all. Next question comes from I show he's he's being smart ass. What's what's the Cynthia to a scrotum? Oh lol. Next one comes from Maria Damayanti. Damayanti. What is your favorite Pokemon? Come on, man! I figured that everybody knew this by now. Favorite Pokemon is Gengar. And of course, I just did a top ten favorite Pokemon like three weeks ago. So any other questions that relate to like that, like what what's your top blank Pokemon? I'm just gonna re refer you guys to that. Just, just go back and check it out. I give it all, I give all the answers there. Look at this, two of them right next. To oh no, that's the same one. Damn, duh, I'm a dumbass. Next one comes from Shardul Siraj. He says, "Which are Pokemon that you wanted the most till the last thing are chilling in the death box?" Well, okay, what are the Pokemon that you wanted to live the most? I'm guessing, but or what Pokemon did I want it to last until the end that are chilling in the death box? Um, definitely Nifty. Definitely Triforce. Definitely Pool. Definitely. Um, Pingu, the Empoleon, definitely Bruce W. Um, Omega, I really wanted to use as well. I think that's six right there, maybe seven. I don't know. I wasn't keeping track, but I think that's enough right there. I really, really enjoyed those Pokemon. I liked them a lot. Unlawful Exiles acting a fool there. Animal Kaiser's 389s acting a fool there. Connor Kenway says, "Nappy, will you do more rapping with guys like Jnuck, Dro, Twit Twit, and Iniquity?" Um, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Three of those guys are no longer doing YouTube or are on hiatuses, whatever you want to say. Um, Jay had some real life shit come up. He has not been super active with YouTube or music uh, as of that, or at least as far as I know, um, for like the past like eight months or some shit like that. But I mean, I still talk to him every once in a while, but I mean, he's doing his thing. And uh, I'm sure if he does come back, we would probably get some more music going. Um, Dro, again, he's got some real life shit going down, he hasn't had like a really, really decent computer for a while, so he's been kind of sort of in and out of the picture. Twit is all League of Legends right now, he, even if you go like check out his like What Twit Plays channel, um, he uploads, his uploads are few and far between, but when he does upload, it's, um, it's, uh, League of Legends. It's funny because he's actually the one that got me into Pokemon, or I won't say he didn't get me into Pokemon, like he, like I saw him do a Leaf Green LP and I was like, hey, I want to do that. So then I did Sapphire and the rest is history, but, and Derek, uh, I mean, again, Derek doesn't upload all too often, but when he does, he brings the heat, he brings the fire. Um, but, I mean, I don't know, it's just, we just have to sit down and talk about it. When it comes to music on my own channel, like Poke Raps and stuff, because I used to do a lot of that when the channel first started. Really, all it's been, you guys, like, I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys, it's just a lack of motivation. That's all it is. Like, um, 
school started and picked up real heavy in the fall, like towards the end of August, and like I, it, it just it started to become one of those things where I had to like prioritize and come up with certain things for for like a time schedule. Like I had to put a certain amount of time towards school, and then I had to put a certain amount of time towards YouTube and then real life and everything else. And it's like. When it comes to YouTube, do I, would I rather spend the evening recording and having an episode of an LP done for tomorrow, or do I want to sit here and write and come up with some stuff and then have one song done over the course of a week, you know? Um, so really, that's all it is, and just just through that and just for not doing it for so long, it's just like a lack of motivation. I've just, like, I have no drive to do music right now, that's all it is. And it's not that I don't have anything to work on, I have, like, three projects that I've started that are, like, halfway done. It's just, I just don't have any drive. Because, like, I don't know about some of you guys out there that do music. If anybody's watching this that, that does music, like, it doesn't come to me like that. Like, I have to sit and, like, write. And I'm really, really hard on myself when I write. If I come up with a line, I'll, like, I'll wrap it, spit it in my head a couple times. And if I don't like it, I'll scratch it. And I'll do that, like, four or five times. Like, I'll rewrite an entire verse, like, four or five times before I'm happy with something. And even then, I may not even be, like, super duper content with it, but. I don't know, it's just, it's just, I put a lot of time into it, and I just don't have the motivation for it right now. Does that mean that music's never, ever gonna come back? No. It's just, I'm on a hiatus. That's the best way I can describe it, so, yeah. Next question comes from Keegan Morrison. What's your favorite competitive Pokemon that you've used? Um... What's my favorite competitive Pokemon that I've used? I would say probably... I don't know, there's one that's just sticking out in my head right now, and I would say it's probably either... I don't know, I'm just I'm just gonna go with one, and this is not like a definite answer or anything, but I'm gonna say Slurp my Gudra. It, I'm so incredibly impressed with the way that it takes special hits, um, even some physical hits it takes decent. Um, not all physical hits, of course, because it's not a physical um, wall, but it, for being a special wall, it just eats up the hits like it's not even funny. And because I run a modest Gudra, I can actually hit back kind of hard. Because most walls, most of the time, walls are there to either like toxic stall out a Pokemon or to just just like stall out a Pokemon and you just whittle away at their health until they're dead. Gudra is like, he'll take that hit and then hit you back just as hard. So I like it. And plus, his move pool is crazy. Like, it's Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Flamethrower, Dragon Pulse. I mean, you got a lot of coverage there. So I don't know. I just like, I like Gudra a lot. Especially because when 6 Gen first came out, I just looked at Gudra and I was like, are you kidding me? Like, that's the 6 Gen pseudo, but I am thoroughly impressed. I love Gudra. Um, anytime I have an OU battle, I'm sure Gudra will be chilling on the team somewhere. Just just because it just eats hits, like, it's not funny. And then you run the Sap Super Gudra. Oh my lord, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. So yeah, I want to go with Gudra on that. He also said, what's your least favorite gym leader? I have no clue. Do you know how many gym leaders there are? People ask questions like this all the time. They'll want me to, like, pick one out of a group of, like, 60 or some shit, and I'm supposed to choose one on the spot. I have no clue, man. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Next one comes through, what are your thoughts on Ludicolo? Watery Taco, hashtag Papa Grande. Those are Ludicolos that I've used in the past. Um, this is another one of those questions where I don't really understand why people are asking me this. Um, a lot of people do this on Ask FM. They'll ask me, like, what are your thoughts on this Pokemon? What are your thoughts on that Pokemon? I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, uh, I don't really hate a lot of Pokemon. But at the same time, I don't really like like a lot of Pokemon either. I'm just kind of neutral to them. Like, they're cool and whatnot, but it's just like... They're there. That's how Ludicolo is for me. He's not like an amazingly good Pokemon. He's not somebody that I'm always going to have on the team. But at the same time, I don't hate him. So he's just kind of like, ah. So yeah, that's, that's, I guess that's my thoughts on uh, Ludicolo. When are you available for an XLY Wi-Fi battle? Really, Connor? Really? Really, Connor? Really? Jose Scott says, favorite 6th Gen Elite 4 member. Um, I would probably say... Probably Seabold, just for his chamber. I like water types a lot, and I think out of everyone that, out of all their animations, like Malva had a really, really intense one with the flames. Uh, I didn't really care for um, what's what's the fuck this steel guy's name? I don't know what his I don't remember what his name is off the top of my head. Wickstrom or some shit like that. Um, I thought his was kind of boring. Drowsnose I thought was really, really boring. How he just had to drag it just to open up. Like what the fuck? But like. Malva and Seabold had like the intense ones, and because I like water more, I thought it was just like I tried to place myself in that in the room when it happened, and just imagine like this wall of water crashing down all around you. Like that's just intense as fuck. I love it. So he's probably my favorite. None of them are really really difficult to like battle. So 
I wouldn't really base it off of that. Uh, Nathan Montando says, intended to be answered after the egg hatching. Throughout all the egg hatches, any Pokemon you wish you had hatched during the series cannot include any of your top 10 Pokemon to make it interesting. Wow, let's just shit on what I was about to say. <laughs> um, because I was going to say, we hatched like three Drillbers the entire time. Um, I would have loved, absolutely loved to have had an Excadrill in this playthrough just because it's like, it's, it's, and this is one thing I was talking to Callum about this too. When, when you do 5th gen LPs, Rarely anybody ever sends you an actual 5th gen Pokemon. Like, 90% of the time, I'm gonna get, like, Pokemon from previous generations, and I'm like, what the hell? We're playing 5th gen. Send me a 5th gen Pokemon, <laughs> you know? Um, but one Pokemon that I would love to hatch that's not in my top 10... <sighs> ...that I didn't get. Um, that's a tough one. I mean, I guess I could say, like... Mmm, I want to say Metagross. I know we hatched one, but that was kind of like ass being modest. Um, I would say either Metagross, even though we've already used them in past LPs, or a Ghastly, to be honest. I mean, that's like the obvious answer. I mean, it's hard. It's hard to do questions like that because there's 700 Pokemon <laughs> or 600. Stop it, Sadie. She make a noise while I'm recording. Because there's like 600 Pokemon available, so it's hard to just pinpoint one or two, especially if they're not in my top 10. So, I mean, I guess I'll just, I'll just go with the answer of like Ghastly or the, a Beldum. Decent ones, decent natured ones. So, yeah, I guess we'd go with that. Best childhood Pokemon memory from Brody Yimmer. Um. Hmm. I remember. Do you remember? Um, I remember cloning Pokemon in first and second gen. Well, not in first gen, in second gen. Uh, I remember doing the missing no glitch in first gen. I remember doing that for like every item in the party. Uh, every item in the party. Every item in the fucking bag. I'd have 999 or 99 or whatever the fuck the number is. I don't remember, but I have all of them for that. Um, that's really all I remember. I mean, I've said in past videos, I, I remember. Um, I lost my copy of Pokemon Gold, like, beneath the deck at, like, the daycare that I used to go to, and it was just, like, it was so important that I got that back, like, I made the fucking daycare person or whatever it was, like, dig under the deck and get my copy of Pokemon Gold back, because fuck that, I'm not going home without it, so, I mean, I guess, I guess you could say that, I mean, I have a lot of Pokemon memories, I've been playing since first gen, you guys, I've been playing since first gen, not continuously the entire time, I took a break after fourth gen, because the first time I played through fifth gen was in the black and white co-op with Kristen, so, like, I wasn't actively playing Pokemon when 5th Gen came out. So, yeah. I guess, I guess, I guess that sums it up. Um, I like your style of music, Nappy. What are some other good songs, like, No Plug, but what music you like? I kind of already talked about that, and of course you guys can just check out the Grinding Montage music. Always linked in the description, if it's available on YouTube. Next one comes from Emerald Slay. What type combination are you hoping will eventually rise? And do you think any new Pokemon types will even appear? Will ever appear? I mean, of course there's going to be new Pokemon types. I mean, there's the whole idea of a light type, a sound type. Um, I've heard some things like uh, as far out of the stretch of like a time type. I don't know really how that would work. I don't really know what that would be like effective and super effective against them um, just because I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, light and sound are definitely two types that I would love to see. Um, what's one type that I want to see? Type combination? Fire or water? Like I said with Volcanion, I think that's the one uh, type combination that everybody is dying to see. Um, maybe ghost fighting too. I think a lot of people wouldn't see that. I don't think we have a ghost fighting type yet. I think that would be interesting to see. So yeah. And a steel poison type too. I don't think a lot of people, um, I don't think we've seen that yet either. I don't think we have off the top of my head. I don't think we have. But yeah, those three typings would be nice to see as well. Oh, and a, and a normal ghost type. Could you imagine that? A normal ghost type? Whoa! Ghost type moves don't work on it. Normal type moves don't work on it. <laughs> that would be interesting to see. So I'd like to see that too. Next question comes from Ryan Endersby. Out of Tornadus, Landorus, and Thunderous, which they informed you like the most? Landorus, easily. I just like him. With his little arms crossed, chilling in the cloud with his little tail arched above his back. I, I, I like him. Next one comes from Abyssal Distortion. How did or do you manage your time recording Pokemon battles and playthroughs with your schoolwork time? Um, right now I'm taking a lot of online courses. 
um, so really I can just do those whenever I want whenever I, I need to I can do those um, this past fall I was not taking online courses or as many as I am and um, it was really really tough because a lot of times I'm most productive at night like right now it's fucking 5 o'clock a.m. in the morning and you guys are gonna see this like later today that's, that's what I'm saying like I'm putting in work it took me three hours to record this it's probably gonna take me another three hours to record this then I edit it all and render it out and upload it so I'm running on a tight shift right now doing this the very next day after I ask you guys to leave questions so um, but it's, it's it's tough sometimes you really have to prioritize and that's why it, it I don't wanna say it makes me angry but it really kind of annoys me when I have subscribers approach me and they have this like feeling of entitlement where they like uh, they, they have this this notion that's like I subscribe to you so you owe me this every single day and it's like no pause wait I'm a human being I'm not some famous person that is like does this just just for the fame or just for I don't even consider it fame like it's it's foolish to even think about that but like sometimes life steps in and Pokemon of all things because at the end of the day it's what this is it's just Pokemon has to be put on hold and um, I like I do apologize for missing some days of blaze black and whatnot I think the longest that we missed this past couple months was four days and if you guys have been around since the beginning of the channel you know I've never missed that long before never never I think up until like December or January I've uploaded basically every single day since the beginning of 2013 so like I never missed days like that so it was really kind of a new thing for me and I felt bad because I've never done it before and I, I feel like I've let certain aspects of the channel slip and I, I just really don't like that I really don't like that so I really want to get everything back on track with these new projects starting next week and again we'll, we'll discuss all that on Friday when they update but um I don't know, it's, like I said, it's really hard sometimes to balance it all, um, but somehow, I'll find a way to make it happen. I'll find a way to make it happen. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, next question comes from the Swaggerific. That's someone that's been around for a long ass time, my lord. If, you stuck on, if you're stuck on an island of legendaries and can choose six Pokemon non-legendary level 100, who would you... Swaggerific! <laughs> come on, man, 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 come on, man. This is what I was talking about in the last episode. People telling me to choose a team of six. Like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Can't do that, man. Come on. Wow, I just watched your first video on your old channel. You sound like Jay. Lol. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny because uh, my very first video I ever put it on YouTube on that channel is not even public any longer. So, ha. It's not even the first video. Next question comes from Muhammad Irfan. Irfan. He says, How old are you? I am the ripe old age of 21. Yeah, I'm old as shit. Of course, there's going to be the people who say, oh, wow, you're too old to play Pokemon. I'm going to tell you guys right now, there's certain aspects of Pokemon that are not made for children. I'm just going to say that right now. Uh, I agree that a majority of the game is directed towards kids, because I'm sure that's where a large majority of their sales are at. But over the years, the game has developed into something that's more than just for kids. And I would say you're not told to do anything, to be honest. I mean, who says there's an age limit on anything, period? I mean, as long as you're happy doing what you're doing, why should your age decide whether you should be doing it or not? That's the way I see it. As long as you're capable of doing it, and I guess, well, no, I was going to say as long as you're good at it as well, but I mean, you don't even have to be good at it. As long as you're enjoying what you're doing and you're capable of doing it, then by all means, do it. But I don't mean like, go kill somebody. <laughs> I enjoy killing people and I'm capable of doing it, so I'm going to go do it. And then mom and dad, why'd you do this, Billy? Nabby told me to. No, 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 no. I didn't tell you to do nothing like that. You guys get what the point that I'm making. You get what you get what I'm saying. Next question comes from Brian Kearney. He says, Dear Nappy, what are your thoughts on Glalie the Ice type? He's my favorite Pokemon. Again, here we go. What are your thoughts on this Pokemon? Glalie, again, it's just it's a Pokemon. I don't love it, I don't hate it, it's just there. I mean, if it comes in handy, then great. But it's just I mean, Glalie did use explosion on me in Pokemon Emerald, and that kind of pissed me off, but it's whatever. Glalie is Glalie, it's cool. No pun intended. Boom, boom, Next one comes from Dashy Man. What inspired what inspired you to make this channel? As I mentioned earlier when I was talking about Twit Twit, um, I gotta take a drink real quick. Um, back when I was on my old channel, I had this channel and it was kind of like a side LP type of thing where I really just I wanted to just play LPs and I had this mindset of like, wow, like chill chaos and. Eat My Addiction, this was back when Eat My Addiction had like 50,000 subs, like I know he's done blown up since then, but this was back when he was doing like the Postal LP, if you guys remember that way back, like I, I loved Eat My Addiction's Postal LP, 
Um, but, um, backgrounds on my old channel, I was just bullshitting around doing whatever, and I made this channel as, like, kind of sort of like a backup. Well, I, well, let me go back even further than that. I made this channel like three years ago or some shit like that. I don't even know. Maybe it was two years ago, three years ago, or something like that. Basically, this channel sat just empty for about a year. So, like, if you go and look at the date this channel was made, and like compared to the first upload, it's like a year's difference or some shit like that. Because I just made it just to secure the name. I never really expected to ever do anything with it. But I made the channel, and then I, I just held on to it for a year. And then I wanted to start uploading LPs as like a secondary thing. That's why if you go and look at the oldest videos on this channel, you see like Mini Ninjas and Dante's Inferno and shit like that. Um, so yeah, I did that and it kind of just put, put it around there for a little while. I wasn't doing much with it. And then I saw my boy Twit. He made his secondary channel after he saw I was uploading on mine. And he did what Twit plays and he was doing LPs and he started up a Pokemon Leaf Green LP. And I was like, yo, I used to play the hell out of Pokemon when I was a kid. You know, this looks fun. I was watching him play, and I was like, I should try this. I should get back into it. So I just picked up Pokemon Sapphire, because blue's, blue is one of my favorite colors. Like, purple is my favorite color now, but blue was one of my favorite colors when I was a kid. And I remember I loved the hell out of Sapphire, third gen. Let's go play it. Let's go play it. So I downloaded the emulator. All that was new to me, and I started playing through it. And I did, that, that LP is just such ass. If you really want to see me make a complete fool out of myself, go watch that LP. I say some of the dumbest shit. You act like I'm a noob to Pokemon. I pretty much was, because like I said, I haven't played it in like five years, so I just made some of the dumbest decisions there and whatnot. But Sapphire was Sapphire, and it got enough attention. And I mean, that that was wow. That was back in the day. I was uploading two episodes of Platinum, um, Platinum, two episodes of Sapphire a day back then. I remember I used to upload one at like 10 o'clock in the morning, and then another at like five o'clock in the afternoon or some shit. And I was like, oh my god, this is great getting 10 likes a video oh my lord this is amazing you know I was just so happy um, um I would love to get back to that uploading two times a day get get my shady penguin on <laughs> but I mean I don't know that, that may come in the future like this summer we may go hard again we might have twice daily uploads or some shit like that but I never really thought that I had a channel that could really support that or sustain that because it's like what am I gonna upload twice a day I mean shady penguin does it because he's uploading Wi-Fi battles but I can't upload two LP parts in a day that's not gonna happen or if it does, that's literally gonna kill me. If I if I did that, I'd have to upload like an LP part and a Wi-Fi battle in, at the same time during the day. But nobody likes my Wi-Fi battles. It is so fuck that. So, anyways, um, so yeah, um, I was doing Pokemon Sapphire, and I guess that gained enough momentum that um, I think towards the end of that, I was doing Black and White with Kristen. I started that up, and just between Sapphire and Black and White. Enough people asked me to do another one of my own, and that's when Soul Silver came out, and that's really when the channel started to gain a lot of momentum. Because through that, by the time Soul Silver finished, we were at like 5,000 subs or some shit like that. And oh no, not even, not even, not even. By the time Soul Silver finished, we were at like 7k or some shit like that. Because I remember uh, Platinum was the next LP after that, the Platinum Meglock, and that is, uh, I remember we started that at 7,000 subs. So yeah. So that's what I said. Like we, we kind of sort of blew up last summer, but it was what it was. Anyways, anyways, I'm getting off topic. <laughs> getting off topic. Um, next question comes from Mr. Explosive Waffles. Why isn't the question of the day a question for this episode? Uh, okay, be a smartass. Next question comes from Amanda the Cat. What's your favorite po Pokemon's name pronunciation? Uh, Gengar. <laughs> this may seem odd, but the way you pronounce Giratina made me laugh. Giratina, yeah. I, I look at Pokemon names sometimes and just say the dumbest shit. It's like Darmanchin. Like, I know it's Darmanitan, but I just say Darmanchin just because it's, it's funny to me. I don't know. Giratina, Darmanchin, all of them. Just, it's whatever. Um, and I'm curious, haha. Since you do seem to pronounce some different than the most, which is something I do as well. Haha. In fact, I kind of picked up the way you say Palkia in Platinum. Yeah, I don't get that. Some people say Palkia. And it's like, when I look at that, I don't think Palkia. I just look at it and say Palkia. Like Nokia. Or Kia, just period. You know, Palkia. That's, that's just how I saw it, and I don't, I don't really know how they pronounce it in the anime. It is what it is. However, they want to pronounce it in the anime is how they pronounce it. I'm gonna go fuck. I've been calling it Palkia since I was a kid. So wow, I just fucked that up. Palkia since I was a kid. <laughs> See what it happens when this gets in my head all at once, my lord. So yeah, that's it is what it is. And now I might just steal that guillotine pronunciation. It's hilariously funny. I know it'll take people off. Well, I'm happy for you, Amanda. Next one comes from Gabe Kearney. Great way to ask him a question. But thank you, sir. Thank you for the compliment, man. Thank you. Next one comes from Master Dumbledore himself. 
He says, what do you think about all boys and all girls school? Do you think there should be only co-ed boys and girls school? What is your opinion? My question for the next episode. P.S. The law will never fall, Nappy. Juan Maria, right there. What are my opinions on all boys and all girls school? That's kind of a unique, like, tailored question. Are you going through some all boy, all girls school drama right now, man? Um, hmm. I mean, it's not something I really think about a lot. Um, I mean, I guess it's okay. I mean, I'm sure all boys and all girls school have been around for a very, very long time. I know there's plenty of co-ed schools out there. Um, so I mean, I, but it's, it's again, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't really have a problem with it, but it's like, if it went away, I wouldn't really care either, so, yeah. Uh, I'm sure they started all boys and all girls school just so, I mean, I don't, I don't know if this is official or anything, this is just my, my thought process. I'm sure they started it with the idea that, like, if you remove the opposite sex, you remove a distraction, so then they can just focus on their schoolwork. I'm sure that's why they were started to begin with. Um, so I mean, I guess that makes sense to some extent because the thirst is real out here these days, okay? The thirst is real out here. That niggas act like the entire world is a desert. But um, but yeah, I mean, I can see where the idea comes from. But like I said, I don't have a problem with them. But at the same time, it's not like I'm like pro all boys, all girls school, you know, whatever, whatever it is, what it is. So yeah, man. And if you are going through some all boy, all girls school drama, Mister Dumbledore, I wish you the best of luck with it. Next question comes from Calumet McCulloch. Out of all the dead Pokemon, what's your favorite? Like we already said, it was nifty. Next one comes to Graffelli. Graffelli. What relation, if any, does your channel name, DK Nappy, have with the Nappy Boy Online channel with all the Young Cash music that you link to us? By the way, you really got me into his music, and it's something I never really thought I'd be into, so thanks, man. But basically, just how'd you come up with your name slash persona? I apologize if you answered this several times. I'm somewhat new here. I've only been following since around the end of the year. Well, Graffaelli, I appreciate you for sticking around with us. Uh, even if you are a new subscriber, I appreciate it. Um, but you are correct. That is where my name comes from. Um, I guess I'll just go ahead and explain it. Um, the persona aspect, like, a lot of people, like, they, they assume that there's, like, an online version of people and, like, an IRL version of people. Really, the only difference between me, like, right now and, like, me and a Skype call with Callum or Kristen or somebody else is that I may not be, like, loud, like, as loud as I am the entire time. Like, I'll chill out, I'll relax and just be laid back and whatever. Um, really, I just, I just try to make sure that I'm always, like, loud and inviting and entertaining while I'm recording this. That's why, like, Q&As and shit that last, like, three hours are, like, draining on people. But, um, but yeah, it really, I'm the exact same person I am right now as I am in real life. So this is not a persona. This is just me. Like, literally, it's just me. I know some people try to act, like, super duper professional and shit in their videos, but it's, like, that's not me. Like, I'm just gonna sit down, play through the game, I'm gonna react naturally, and just be done with it. That's why, I like... Sometimes, like, for example, like, the Alder voice, the first time I did the Alder voice, I didn't even think it was that funny. Like, I just looked at Alder and I was like, he's got bright-ass hair, it's spiky as shit, he sounds like a badass, so I just gave him a badass voice, you know? And everybody and their mother loved it, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are watching right now agree, like, you guys love the Alder voice, but to me, it's just, like, it's just that. And sometimes I'll just say things and I'll have sayings or I'll crack a joke in the middle of an episode and to me it's not even that funny. But people like they'll tweet at me and they'll, they'll bring it up months later and they say like I died laughing when you said this and I'm just like I'm glad you enjoyed it but I mean I didn't even think it was that funny you know. So that's why I said like the, me in videos and me like IRL is the exact same person. I'm sorry. Sorry. When it comes to my name though, The King Nappy, when I first started YouTube I'd say like three years ago or some shit like that on my old channel. Um, I, I made my name Mr. Nappy192 because like four years ago or some shit like that when I first got a PS3 I made my online username NappyBoy92 because at the time I was a huge T-Pain fan. I mean I've kind of mellowed out since then and I mean I still support his music and trust me if you don't like T-Pain I could give two shits. Me being a T-Pain fan I have heard every insult in the book. I really don't give a fuck. You listen to what you want to listen to I'll listen to what I want to listen to. Um, but I was a huge T-Pain fan. When Buy You a Drink dropped and Bartender and all that, I mean, I lost my mind listening to that music. I loved it. You could ask me any song about T-Pain, I'm sure I know the words. You know, I'm just, I was just a huge T-Pain fan. And his record label is called Nappy Boy, uh, the Nappy Boy Records, Nappy Boy Studios, whatever the fuck it is. But Nappy Boy is his thing. That's why in the song you say Nappy Boy or whatever. I can't do that, but I know it kills me as a T-Pain fan not to be able to do that, but still. Um... I made my PSN username NappyBoy92 because it's Nappy Boy, and that 92 is the year I was born. So on PS3, 
the Nappy192. That's where it all started. If you shoot a friend <laughs> friend request to Nappy192, I probably won't answer it because I haven't turned my PS3 on in like six months, but that's where it started. Then, when I hit 600 subscribers, I know, imagine that, 600 subscribers on my old channel, I told everybody on there, because I was doing Call of Duty at the time, um, that I would get an Xbox. So, Xbox subscribers, we could do open lobbies and shit, and we could still play. So, I did that. But when I got an Xbox, um, the username NappyBoy92 had already been taken by some, like, kid in Sweden somewhere or some shit. So, NappyBoy92 on Xbox is not me. So, um, at the time... Uh, it was just as, just as around the same time that I got my Twitter name, my Twitter handle, I think. Oh, no, 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 it's backwards, it's backwards, never mind. Um, yeah, that's backwards, because I got Xbox first and I got on Twitter. So, I got an Xbox, and at the time, everyone just called me Nappy, because, you know, my channel name was Mr. Nappy192, and Nappy is just, like, the shortened version of it. That's what everyone calls me, and to this day, that's what everyone calls me. That's how I can tell if someone's new to me or not, because my name now is The King Nappy. If people call me King... They say, hey, King, what's going on? I'm like, you don't know me. <laughs> so, yeah, everyone just calls me Nappy. So, uh, everyone called me Nappy, and then, you know, the if you want to call it an ego or whatever you want, but I made my Xbox Live Gamer Tag King Nappy, just for whatever reason. You know, I just did it. It was, it was done. So, on Xbox, King Nappy is me. Again, uh, really all I use Xbox for is Netflix, so if you send a friend request, it's probably just going to sit there. I'm sorry. I don't really play Xbox that much anymore. It's just there. Um, so yeah, so I made the Xbox King Nappy, and then I got a Twitter. And at the time, I liked the sound of King Nappy better than um, better than Mr. Nappy 192. You know, I've never really cared for that name that much. I don't know why I made it to begin with, Mr. Nappy 192. That's just a fucking mouthful. But I made the channel. I mean, uh, yeah. Wait, what? No, I made the Twitter the King Nappy, and it's been that way ever since. And I couldn't make it King Nappy. I couldn't get the channel name King Nappy because there is somebody else on YouTube called King Nappy. He does like little parodies and vlogs and, sh and shit. I haven't been to his channel in like six months, so I don't know what the hell he's doing. But yeah, that's what he does. If you guys want to go look him up, you can. I don't really care. Don't like go hate on him or anything like that. Because I would feel bad because he hasn't really fucked with me at all. Um, but yeah, so I had to make the King Nappy on Twitter. And in turn, the channel name came as well because I just wanted to get the channel name. And the rest is history. You guys already know what happened after that. So yeah, that's where the name Nappy came from. <laughs> that's the evolution of my name on YouTube, and uh, that's what I say in my intro. I say, "What's good, YouTube? Nappy Boy 92 here, back again, once again." Because that's what I called myself on my original channel, and that intro itself really just came out of nowhere. Because I think on like the third or fourth video I did on my original channel, I, I used that as my intro. I just said that. And then I think I said it for like three or four videos in a row, and then I didn't say it. And all of the two subscribers I had at the time commented and said, wow, you didn't say your intro. And I'm like, I have an intro? The fuck? <laughs> you know? And it just stuck ever since. And over time, it's developed, and you know, back again, once again. And today, people today got added on to it, and it's, that's just what it is today. So that's what I say in my intro. I know some people sometimes have issues uh, hearing what I'm saying because I say it so fast, but yeah. So that's where the evolution of that came from. Nice 20 minute explanation. I know, I'm just the best. But yeah, it is what it is. That King Nappy guy actually sent me a message on Xbox. Because I guess he like deactivated his game his um, gamer tag or whatever. And in that time I went and picked it up. And he was like all mad. He was like, hey, like, I'm back. Can I have my gamer tag back? And I'm like, who are you? <laughs> no, you can't have it back. I'm sorry. And he was like, well, alright, thanks. Anyway. So that's why I'm like, I don't know. if you guys do go check out his channel, like, don't be mad at him or anything. Like I said, I haven't checked out his channel in, in months, so I don't even know if he still uploads or not, but yeah, that's a thing. Anyways, so yeah. Next one comes from Ayo Trevi. So, Nappy, do you watch WWE? If so, who's your favorite wrestler? I already answered that one. Um, next one comes from Chong Zhang Xuan. Where was the furthest place country of everyone out of America? I have only gone to one country out of America. And, well, it's not the farthest that I've ever been. Um, the only country outside of America that I've visited is Mexico. I live in Arizona. I live in the south, in the southern area of Arizona. The border is not very far from where I live. Well, it's kind of far. Like, if you had to walk, it's far. <laughs> but in a car, it would probably only take, like, two, maybe three hours to get to the border from where I live. So it's not that far. So I have been to Mexico a couple times. The farthest that I've been outside, of, like, North America, continental United States, I've been to Hawaii. But, I mean, that's still considered America. Or a part of the U.S., so Mexico, I guess, is the answer to that question. So yeah, 
So yeah. So yeah, next one comes from Psychotic71. Nappy first, I just want to say that you're my favorite YouTuber. Oh, thank you. Oh, I get hard. My question for you is how come on Twitter every once in a while you throw out the notion about quitting YouTube? Are you just are you losing motivation? Um, way to put me on the spot, man. <laughs> um, it's it's one of those things where it's like I don't want to say I'm losing motivation, but I mean I'm human. You know, like, like I say all the time, like people, like I think I joined one of Kristen's live streams a couple weeks ago and everyone's like, oh my god, you're so famous. I'm like, I don't see myself as famous. You know, I'm no different now than I was six months ago. Uh, I go through all the same motions of creating and uploading content. It's just the fan base, the following has, has grown since then. Um, but like I said, I'm still human. You know, I've had thoughts about, you know, like what if I quit YouTube? Like I had those thoughts back on my old channel. So, you know... The idea of hope and doubt and all that shit, that's just human nature. It's human nature to doubt what you're doing. It's human nature to have hope in what you're doing. So there are times where I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, wow, like, why am I doing this? Why am I still doing this? But at the same time, I'm a realist. Uh, I, 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 I'm a realist and I'm rational in the sense that like, I'm not going to go and do something irrational. I'm not going to go and close my channel. But I mean, the thoughts are there. And you know, I mean, Twitter is just one way to vent. I've been a lot on Tumblr as well. So it's just just ways to vent like I'm not actually thinking about closing my channel and if I did do something like that I like I said I wouldn't do something irrational and just stop without telling you guys like if I, if it came to the point where it's like I just wanted to be done with YouTube and I have no idea when that might be I would probably do go about it the right way and just like end this series that I'm working on at the time and then just say you know thank you guys for all your support but the time has come for this to come to an end unfortunately as sad as it is but I gotta close this chapter of my life and move on to something else but like I said, I don't know when that's gonna happen, so don't worry about it getting sad. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. It's not happening anytime soon. Or at least I hope it isn't, but yeah. It is what it is. Next one comes from Miku Teto Neru. Says, Navi, will you ever do a Wonderlock? Um, the idea is to do a Pokemon X Wonderlock sometime because we did the Pokemon YLP, but I don't know when that's gonna happen because we're still doing the X and Y co op over on Lumio Station. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know when that's gonna happen. Uh, if it happens at all, well, I want to say that it will happen because I really do want to do a Wonderlock. I think it's going to be really, really fun and entertaining, but I still feel like I want to put a little bit more space between the Pokemon YLP and where we're at now because you got to think, I did a Pokemon YLP, then I did the X and Y Solar Run Versus with Callum, now I'm doing the X and Y Co-op on Lumio Station, and then if I do an X Wonderlock, that's four LPs in the span of like six months of the, of the exact same game. So, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm not going to say that I never want to do a Pokemon X Wonder Lock, because I definitely do. It's just i got to find the right time to do it. But like I said, on Friday, in the update video, we're going to talk about all that. If you guys have been around long enough for the update videos, then you already know how that's going to go. But if you haven't, make sure you check it out, because that's a lot of, that's like direct feedback between me and you. All that good, little bit of heavy bullshit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Black Kiram Pokemon says, Yo, man, how'd you come up with Charon's voice? Funny as hell. A lot of the voices that I have come from like movies and TV shows and just experiences in life. Charon's voice comes from a TV show that some of you guys might have heard of called King of the Hill. Um, if you guys are familiar with King of the Hill, then you know Hank's son, Bobby. Uh, when he goes to school, he deals with this, I guess you could call him a bully. I don't know what his name is off the top of my head, but I know he wears a black shirt. It's just the side of his head are shaved. He's got the, like the blonde like mullet type ponytail in the back of his head. Um, but if you watch King of the Hill, then you already know what I'm talking about. That's where the voice came from. That's my impression of his voice. It's like, Bobby. Like, that's his voice. That's, or, I don't even know if that was a good impression or not. That was just, like, off the top of my head. But that's where it came from. So that's that's really all it is. That's, that's where Chan's voice came from. It's not Napoleon Dynamite. It's none of that. It's just the Bobby's friend from school on King of the Hill. So, yeah. Next one comes from Ichuri Senpai. What is your least favorite Pokemon? I'm sure a lot of you guys know what this is as of right now, but I did do a top 5 least favorite Pokemon like two weeks ago, and it is Umbreon for multiple reasons. If you want to know why, go watch the video. That's all I gotta say. Next question comes from Jonathan Hurd. If you had to pick one Pokemon that represents your personality the most, excluding Gengar, what would it be? A lot of people have told me Entei. Because Entei is like a strong, charismatic leader, and... I mean, I don't want to sit here and be cocky and say that that's me, but like I said, a lot of people have been saying it about me, and I guess if a lot of people say it, then it's got to be true. I mean, again, that's not a carbon copy type thing where you can just apply it to everything. You know, if everyone says that you're a loser, it does not mean that you're a loser. You get the point that I'm making. Just a lot of people 
have proposed that question in the past, and a lot of people have answered Entei for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and say Entei. I mean, I like Entei a lot. It's one of my favorite Pokemon, so I'm happy with it. So I'll, I guess I'll just say Entei too. Um, next one comes from Graphaheli again. If you could change the colors or look of a particular shiny, which Pokemon would you pick, and what colors would you change or choose? You can pick more than one. It doesn't matter. First thing that comes to mind on the top of my head is Mamoswine. I love Mamoswine. He's probably in my top 20 Pokemon. I guess we can go back and answer that for that one question that said, um, what Pokemon would I like to hatch that I didn't uh, in Egglock? Um, was Mamoswine. It's fine, but I know uh, I did hatch a couple of those in the video. Or in the when I was hatching the eggs and whatnot, but definitely Mammal Swine. Mammal Swine Shiny is ugly. It's like this snot yellow. It looks like a giant booger. I would definitely change it to like maybe like all white, like Mega Gengar. I think that'd be nice, especially since it's like an ice type. I think that'd be cool to see. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Next one comes from Tyrone Tigum 64. He says, "Can't wait until the next LP." You said that. Um, the next one is a normal Pokemon game, so I'm hoping it's one of the Mystery Dungeon games. Oh my lord! This man is all over the Twitter! I tweeted out like a couple hours ago. Preferably Red Rescue Team because your favorite Pokemon plays a major role in that game. Unfortunately, Tyrone, I'm gonna go ahead and just say this now, it is not one of the Mystery Dungeon games. If I ever do Mystery Dungeon, which I probably won't, I'm just gonna say that now because I'm not a huge fan of the series, it would probably be in like a live stream LP, which hopefully we can get started again this summer. Um, it's one of the plans that I want to include because we used to do that a lot, but then I had internet issues. I still have internet issues from now and then, but uh, if I did that, it would have to be a live LP because I'm just not a huge fan of those games. So the next LP is definitely not that. So sorry. But like I said, Friday update video. Find out then. All good. Heavy, 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 heavy. Bullshit. So yeah. Next one comes from Ty Money Craft. Nappy was about six when I started playing Pokemon, and now I'm 12. But I just want to know. Can me and you do videos together? Because right now I just need some help with my setup. It would be awesome if you could help me. Time Money Craft. Um, my best advice for you um, is to start. Just just choose somewhere to start. That's really all I gotta say. Choose somewhere to start. Like, I like how I started with Pokemon Sapphire. Choose somewhere to start and just work. Because the only way that you can get better on YouTube is experience. There is no blueprint to YouTube. Period. And if you are another YouTuber watching this, or you're a bigger YouTuber than I am watching this, or whatnot, you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, because I can only speak on what I've experienced. But what I can tell you right now is that there's no blueprint for YouTube. There is no guaranteed path to success, because everybody is different. Everybody has a different personality, everybody has a different way that they're going to do things, everyone's going to have different content that they're going to put out. So I can't sit here and tell you, do this, this, and this. Or I can't sit here and tell you that even if I did a video with you, you would be successful. Because I could sit here and give you a shout out and there'd be 900 people, or I don't even know how many people would do it, but there'd be people that would go subscribe to you, but that doesn't mean that they're gonna go subscribe to you and remain active. It doesn't mean they're gonna stay subscribed to you and do all this shit. Um, really, you just have to do it and learn through experience. You know, you have to produce content, find out what works for you, find out what doesn't work for you, and really just evolve. YouTube is a giant snowball. That's all it is. You just have to keep pushing that snowball and pushing that snowball and pushing that snowball and eventually it'll get to the point where it's big enough that it'll roll on its own. So really that's all I can say. That's all I can say, dude. I don't know, I'm gonna reread your comment, make sure uh, I wanna do the video escapes right now. I just need some help with my setup. It'd be awesome if you could help me. Um, with your setup, I mean, like I said, I think it's pretty standard on YouTube now for an editing program to be like Sony Vegas. I know there are some other programs out there like Adobe Premiere. You can use it if you like, um, but really, Sony Vegas, I'd say, is, is a good place to start. It's a good standard. Um, Photoshop are good programs as well to use. Um, recording programs really comes down to how strong your PC is. Um, I recommend like DX Story, Fraps maybe, XSplit. Just, I mean, it's, it's really just, like I said, it's experience. You just have to find out what works for you and what doesn't work. There is no guaranteed plan. Because I could sit here and tell you my entire setup. Does that mean that you're going to be able to run the exact same thing? Does it mean that you're you're going to like the exact same programs? No. You just have to go out there and just try it on your own. I know that may sound scary because YouTube is a big place, but you just got to try it on your own. And once you get that ball rolling, you're going to look to your left and your right and see other people right next to you that are pushing their snowball as well. You need to reach out to them and help them push that snowball, and they're going to reach out to you and help you push your snowball. I know, I'm, I'm getting real deep with it, but basically what I'm saying is you got to start networking. You know, just like how you see like me and Kristen working on projects together and me and Callan working on projects together. That's really what networking is. You know, reach out, 
work with people, work with people on your own size. You know, I don't want to be a dick or anything like that, but it's kind of unrealistic for somebody that is just starting to reach out to somebody with, you know, 80,000 subscribers and say, hey, do a video with me. Um, but I mean, that's just, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you might get something off of this, you might not, I don't know. If someone's watching this and you want to go help him out, by all means you can, but it's just what it is. Like I said, work with work with what you have and just learn as you go. Reach out to those people that are around your same sub base, maybe a little bit higher, and have them network with you. And trust me, everything will start working and that snowball will keep rolling. Keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling. And you'll make it, dude. So don't worry about it. And of course, optimism is the biggest tool of them all. If you sit there and you say that, oh my god, everything is terrible and all is woe, then, you know, that's not going to help your motivation either. So, stay optimistic and keep pushing that snowball, dude. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. Next one comes from Pokegamer5000. He says, what is your favorite aspect of the Pokemon games? What got you into Pokemon in the first place? Favorite aspect of the Pokemon games is the fact that there are so fucking many of them. Um, and, of course, that's, like, the biggest selling point of the game itself. I mean, that's why things like Yu-Gi-Oh! and Digimon and um, Beyblade. I don't even know what, what the hell you want to say. That's why it sold so well, because everybody has one Pokemon that they can connect to. Everyone has their favorite Pokemon. And in turn, you're going to have other Pokemon that you like as well. And that's, I guess that's my favorite part. Just Gengar. Gengar! So yeah. And of course, there's other things cool that are that are nice, but whatever. Uh, next one comes from Mark o uh, Osmark. How old are you? You already know that. Can you do a Wonderlock? Because everyone else I can next play through. We'll see. What's your favorite Pokemon from this LP? Nifty. Uh, oh, and Gibson Les Paul says, Oh, and one more question. One more question to answer. Remember when you did those commentary roundtables on your channels to hype up the reads the X and Y? I really enjoyed listening to you all in this The YouTube Reasons community talking and interacting with each other about Pokemon. Is there any sort of roundtable discussion between you guys planning for the future? There was originally a roundtable, a fourth roundtable plan for after the release of X and Y. It was supposed to be at like the end of October or the end of November or whatever. But like I said, I had some issues with my internet and I just stopped streaming completely. And it sucks because a lot of people enjoy the live streams and a lot of people enjoy the roundtables. And I know Sacred Fire Negro Nick is out there trying to get this next round table to go um but i don't know we'll see i won't rule it out completely but i wouldn't say like get your hopes up for it either we'll see what happens and uh if we can get everyone together we might do another one but we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see next one comes from keel stink he says out of all mega evolutions which one do you dislike the most mine is pincer looks weird as fuck i'm just gonna go ahead and say this now i'm not gonna say whether i like or dislike a pokemon because there's no such thing as an opinion on the internet, <laughs> but I'm just going to go ahead and give you guys my impression on Mega Evolutions, period. I am not a huge fan of Mega Evolutions, but at the same time, I don't hate them. You know, again, I'm just impartial to it. I don't think that Mega Evolutions are the greatest idea ever, but if they would have never given us Mega Evolutions, would I be upset? No. I would be happy just as much if they just gave us the 70 new Pokemon that we got. So yeah. So yeah. So yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Least favorite... <sighs> Mm, not doing it. Not doing it. Not doing it. Never mind. Moving on. <laughs> hey, Nazi boy, you so awesome. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Did your blood boil playing this? Oh, oh, oh yeah. this video is kind of approved. Which move set are you running on your Gengar in Gen Five? Um, Gen Five Gengar from Appy Terrier. I think Gen Five Gengar, because I mean, there's there's different Gengars you can run. You can run like a sub disable Gengar. You can run a uh, like a, a Destiny Bond Gengar to like take out Pokemon because Gengar is really really fast. Um, I guess the I guess the most common Gengar that you're gonna see in Gen 5 that is, um, I would say probably like Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, Sludge Bomb, on some instances Sludge Wave, and then probably Focus Blast. I think Focus Blast got replaced in Gen 6 with Dazzling Gleam because Dazzling Gleam is a little more effective because it can take out Dragons too. And it still works on dark types because really that's the only reason that you ran focus blast. Well, I guess for steel types and um, I guess I guess it really just depends on what you want to do in Gen Six. But in Gen Five, focus blast was the one that you went with. Gen Six, you could still run focus blast to handle steel types and dark types. But uh, I'm, I'm more comfortable with dazzling gleam because you run into more uh, dragons competitively. I guess in Six gen, I guess. I don't know. I'm not gonna sit here and try and sound authoritative about competitive battling because I'm in no place to do that. But I just feel more comfortable personally running Dazzling Gleam over Focus Blast, especially because the accuracy. I think Focus Blast is like 70, 75 percent or some shit like that, and Dazzling Gleam is 100 percent. And plus, in multi battles, Dazzling Gleam works well too because it hits everybody in the field, whereas Focus Blast doesn't. So yeah, but that's fifth gen for you. Difference between fifth and sixth gen. 
Next one comes from Mr. Meaty 101. What Pokemon do you think should be Ubers? Lucario, or at least a Lucario Knight should be banned to Ubers. Yeah. Our reasoning behind that is, um, when Lucario Mega Evolves, it's power. It is very, very powerful. Um, I think that if they were to lower Lucario's speed a little bit more, it could stay OU. Like, in the sense of, like, Mega Garchomp, because they lower Garchomp's speed when he Mega Evolves, but he's still really, really fucking powerful. At the same time, he's not super duper slow, but, like, a Mega Garchomp, in my opinion, is easier to take out than a uh, Mega Lucario. Especially because Lucario gets, um, priority moves, being Bullet Punch and Extreme Speed, and Vacuum Wave. I think Vacuum Wave has, like, plus two priority or some shit, and I know Extreme Speed does too. Um, just... The power behind Meg Lucario, if he didn't have those priority moves and he was a little bit slower, it'd be nice because, let's let's face it, let's be honest, there is almost nothing that can safely take a hit from Lucario. There's almost nothing that you can switch into, I mean from Meg Lucario, there's almost nothing that you can safely switch into and take a hit from a Meg Lucario. Maybe a Gliscor, maybe. That's the only thing I think off the top of my head. Maybe a Gliscor could. I mean, I'm not saying that, that like in OU, all the Pokemon in there are just ass and they can't take a hit from Meg Lucario, it's just there's not a lot. And I think that it's kind of sad that you have to run one Pokemon or another to just counter Mega Lucario. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. I think the Lucario Knight should be banned to Ubers. And if that happens, then I think Shofu tweeted this out once. Um, I think if the Lucario Knight gets banned to Ubers, Lucario might drop from OU to UU. Just because of, like, fairy types and other shit. Well, not even because of fairy types. He's part steel. But I think he might drop. Because Lucario's defenses are not all that. I mean, one Earthquake and he's popped. He's done. <laughs> and I know there are Pokemon out there that can take hits from Lucario, so if you could just take a hit from Lucario and hit it once, maybe twice, it's gone. But Mega Lucario just hits way too hard for the speed that he has, but that's just my opinion. Just one guy, just one guy, just one guy. Next one comes from David Asplund. Are you watching others doing Pokemon playthroughs? If you are, who? Love the stress-free song. I'm glad you guys enjoy stress-free. Um, wow, stress-free. I like the song a lot, and I just used it, and kind of caught on, kind of like my intro did years ago. And I guess it's kind of like the channel anthem now or some shit like that. I don't know. If you go to the stress-free video that's like linked in the description all the time, the entire comment section is just snappy sent me here, yada, yada, yada. And it's just like, I didn't tell anybody to go check that out, but people love the song. So, yeah. Um, do I watch other Pokemon uh, LPs on YouTube? I try and keep up with them. I don't watch them uh, all the way through like I used to. The last LP that I watched from beginning to end was Hoodlum Scrafty, Callum's um, Pokemon Platinum Egglock. Uh, yeah, that was the one he did, yeah, because he didn't Storm Silver after that. So that was the last one I watched all the way through. That was, what, like 10 months ago or some shit? That was when I first met him. Um, so yeah, that's the last one I watched all the way through. But I do keep up with, like, my friends on YouTube, and I watch them, and I'll leave comments on videos and stuff. I'm sure you guys see us interact all the time. But, I mean, there's just not enough time in the day. Because the difference between, like, 10 months ago and now is that I know a lot more people. I support a lot more people's content, so I, if I actually sat and watched like every single video that uh, that I like on Twitter from beginning to end, I would literally be here for like four hours a day just watching videos, and I would get no work done. <laughs> so yeah, so I mean that was that was the last time I watched. I think before that was Eat My Diction's postal playthrough, but that's not Pokemon. So yeah. What is your favorite bulky Pokemon, Gudra? When did you start YouTube from Magmatic Fail, and did someone influence you to start? Um, like I said, I started YouTube, I think I started YouTube September 14, 2010. I think that was the day I started, I remember that, because it was one week before my birthday, and I think the year was 2010, I'm pretty sure. And did someone inf influence me to start YouTube? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say no, um, but I think if there was one person, I would say it's only Use Me Blade. He's in the Call of Duty community. Um, I watched a lot of his videos. I mean, I used to watch like his videos before I go to bed at night. I watched like eight or nine videos. I went back to all his old shit back on COD 4 and whatnot. I just liked his commentary. He was funny. Whereas everyone else was like talking like analytical about the game. I was like, I don't give a fuck about damage between this gun and that gun. Like, say something that's gonna make me laugh. And that's that's what I would. That's what it was. And that's why I watched only Use Me Blade. And he didn't really like convince me to get into YouTube. Like, I don't really, like, see him as, like, my motivation for it. I kind of just, like, picked up a, a Dazzle DBC 100 and just got into it one day. Um, but, yeah, I don't really see him as, like, my motivation for it. But if I had to shoot somebody, he's probably, like, the number one suspect, I guess, is the way, the way I could put it. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Next one comes from Lockdog. Did you watch the anime and did it make you want to play the game or vice versa? Um, honestly, I don't even remember. I don't even remember. I feel like I saw the show first. 
because I know I asked my mom for the, the game for my birthday one year. Um, but I, I guess, I guess that's how I can say it. I, I mean, I don't really remember, but that's like the most logical way to go about it, because it's not like I just saw the game out of nowhere one day. So, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Happy what's your real name? Or whatever all that. What was your first? Who was your first crush? Um, like of all time. Uh, I think it was this chick named Kimberly. I don't even remember her name. I'm sure like if I went to the garage or some shit and like dug through boxes, I could find like a a yearbook with like a picture in it. I don't know. It was like in third grade. Yeah, it was third grade Miss Alloway's class. I remember that was the teacher's name. Oh god, I hope somebody doesn't like YouTube search or Google search Miss Alloway. I don't even know what Miss Alloway's doing anymore. Miss Alloway didn't like me, so fuck her. <laughs> I feel so bad saying that. But uh, I don't remember what the chick's name was. I think it was Kimberly, but it was third grade, so I mean, it was just a crush. Crush was a crush. Oh well. Oh well. Oh well. Next one comes from Big Mike1234. Why did you want to be a YouTuber? Um, like I said, I don't really know what my motivation was for it. I guess I just looked at it and I was like, it's cool. Let's try it out. What was your first Pokemon game? It was either Pokemon Yellow or Pokemon Blue. I know I wasn't a huge fan of Pokemon Red just because at the time I was a huge fan of the color blue. So it was one of those two. Luis Diaz says, if you could choose between Dragon Ball Z, Naruto Bleach, or Attack on Titan, what, would you, what world would you live in? I don't know because I have not seen all of Dragon Ball Z. I know. Crucify me now. I've seen a lot of it, just not all of it. Um, Naruto I've never seen, Bleach I've never seen, and Attack on Titan I've never seen. I try to watch Attack on Titan, but I'm going to be that guy and just say it now. Again, don't crucify me, but I am not a huge fan of subbed anime. It has to be dubbed for me to watch it. I'm sorry. A lot of the time when I'm watching anime, I'm doing like more things at once. Either I'm playing Pokemon, I'm editing a video, or uh, I'm just doing more than one thing at a time. And I can't sit there and just look at the screen the entire time and read what's, what's on the bottom of the screen. So it's got to be dubbed for me to enjoy it fully. So, Attack on Titan, I know it's not dubbed yet, but I really, really do want to see Attack on Titan. Because uh, from what I've seen from it, it looks amazing, but I just gotta wait for a dub to come out. So, sorry, 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 sorry. Everyone's different. Um, from PsychoDude91, I'm guessing, he says, What's your ethnicity? I am. I guess you could say I'm black and white, I guess, mixed. Um, to be more specific, um. My dad's side of the family is black, if you want to say African American, you can. My mom's side of the family is, well, let me break it down. My great grandmother, who just passed away like a year ago, bless her soul, um, she was 100% Italian. Her parents um, immigrated from Italy to the US, and then they had like 13 kids, she was one of them. She married a black man, and they had children, and I think, uh, yeah. Then my grandmother married a black man, and they had children. Me and my mom. My mom married a black man, and that's where I came from. So that's why I'm light-skinned, because my great-grandmother is 100% Italian. But, I mean, Italian is your nationality. Your ethnicity is still white. So, <laughs> I guess you could, I guess that's the right way to look at it. I think if there's any genealogist or anybody out there that wants to break that down differently for me, I guess that's the way um, it breaks down. So, yeah, that's, that's why I'm light-skinned and whatnot. Um, so yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, okay, okay. I know people have said I look Cuban before, people say I look Mexican. I've heard almost everything Puerto Rican, all that shit. Next one comes from Silver SB on 64. That's another name that's been around for a very long time. He says, Congrats on winning your first lock. The series is easily one of my favorites. Keep it up, Nappy. I guess my question is, how do you upload almost daily, even with the school going on in your life? Again, thanks for making awesome content. Keep it up, bro. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I kind of already went over that, though, so I'm sorry. Blitzkrieg Gorilla says, I would just like to say thank you for being on YouTube. You are a hilarious content. I hope that you keep making vids. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Daniel Cousin, what is your favorite Mega Evolution? Either Mega Gengar or Mega Venusaur. But again, I did make a Mega Evolution video. Top 5 Mega Evolutions. Um, Ian106 says, what is the next series you're going to make? Wait till Friday. What was the most shocking death from everything.com? Um, I would say probably the nifty death. I'm going to go ahead and say that now. I know you got the special defense drop, I think the Glaze Sound or the Frost Lash, you use Shadow Ball or some shit and I got a special defense drop, and I did not expect the Blizzard to kill me like that, because uh, Nifty's special defense is higher than his defense, and I thought he would tank it, but I think it was a crit too. Mm-hmm. I think it was a crit too. So either that, or the High Dragon Triple Team in Skyless Gym, that was kind of shocking too, 
Cause he tanked those hits like a champion. Drive Force was a champion. He tanked them shits. That was that was shocking when they triple teamed him like that. And then also Omega's death. Cause I mean I guess I guess competitive by sharp runs Stone Edge. Um, I really fucked the by sharp competitively, but I was not expecting him to have that. Um, that really shocked me. But yeah, I guess I guess I guess that's it. Um, Gibson Lee Pauls, again, he says, Hey, Nappy, I just want to say that you do more for your viewers than most YouTubers. Oh, thank you. I actually used to do more, and I want to get into that again, but I'm going to talk about that on Friday. I'm going I'm to talk about that on Friday. Don't worry, I'm not going to get into it right now. Uh, most YouTubers I've seen, you are straight up honest and real with your fans. Thank you, and we appreciate it. I'm glad. I certainly appreciate the amazing content you bring us, even with your busy schedule. Keep it up, man. Hope we can chill one day. My question, what's one of your favorite memories from high school slash college? Um, hmm, let me think, 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 let me think. I'm trying to think. Honestly, and this may come as a surprise to some of you guys, um, I'm gonna have to say my favorite memory from high school slash college, um, in high school, Towards the end, when I was in senior year, um, once you had enough credits, like if you had more credits and you just wanted to have like a free period, you could have a free period. And I remember, because we had block schedules, you'd have three classes a day. Um, and um, I remember, uh, like, I got first period off. So on whatever, let's say, first, second, and third period started on Monday, I wouldn't have to come to school until like 11.30 maybe noon I don't remember what the, the schedule was but I know I didn't have to get up early on those days and then periods four five six the next day I had six period off so I could just leave early at like two o'clock in the afternoon I could just take off or some shit like that whenever second period ended so um, that was my favorite memory because believe it or not I really did not like high school that much just that's just me I'm sure that's a video that's a story for another video sometime maybe if I ever do a drama in my life I'll get into it then but I was not a huge fan of high school so I was happy just to get the fuck out of there so yeah it's not that I was like bullied or anything like that it was just I just didn't want to be there so I was just happy to get out and uh or the fact that I didn't have to come there as early and it was nice because it was like the perfect perfect days like I could sleep in early and I got off early I could do whatever the fuck I wanted to so that was my favorite memory of high school so yeah for your next lock, can you do a randomizer? Maybe Pokegamer 5000, we'll see though. Nathan James says, question of the day, what are you studying at school at the moment and why did you start your YouTube channel? What are your plans for the future of your channel and your life? Uh, future channel we already talked about, why we started YouTube we already talked about. What are you studying at school at the moment? Right now, I'm still doing just like gen ed classes. Um, I guess, I guess you could say, uh, last time I really spoke about this on the channel in, in a public format, and a lot of people, a lot of you guys know that I want to be a history teacher. And that's still true. I would love to teach history, but I really want to teach history at like the high school, college level. I don't want to teach, like, kids about history, because you can't have like a serious conversation about history with kids. It's really just more like talking down to them. You know, as, whereas opposed to if you have like a, a, a college discussion about history, you can talk about ethics and morals and philosophy or, or just anything else that deals with history that, that you that you could with that and um, you can't really do that with kids and uh, I was talking to my counselor this past semester before this semester started and she was like you know if you wanted to we can get you involved in some um, like hands-on teaching classes like you could go in and observe kids and whatnot and I was like wow I don't know if I want to do that yet you know I don't know if I'm ready for that yet especially with YouTube because like YouTube and being a teacher don't go hand in hand. Like I know there are some YouTubers on here that play games and whatnot that are teachers, but you kind of have to be really, really strict. You kind of have to censor yourself a lot because of the fact that you are a teacher. And if anybody found out or somehow your YouTube got linked, you really just need to be PG and whatnot because they're gonna frown upon you if you're a teacher and you're on YouTube saying, "Man, fuck this Pokemon," you know, you know, fuck that nigga, you know, all that shit. So. I, I really wasn't like YouTube is really like picking up for me right now. You know, I've never had a channel, I've never been at the point in YouTube where I've had 80,000 plus subscribers. That's amazing. That's so humbling, and I'm just I just enjoy it so much. So I guess you could say I kind of put that on hold for a while just to see where YouTube goes. Um, but uh, really, I've just shifted my focus more so to like a business administration degree because even if even if the the history teacher thing doesn't pan out. I could still go back to school and get the class that I needed to be a teacher and be a history teacher and still pursue it, but at the same time, business administration just offers me more options after school, or after school's done, 
um, more and more careers are open towards me for that as opposed to like a liberal arts history degree would so I'm just gonna put that on hold for now but still I would love to be a history teacher it's just well I don't know I don't know I don't know what you want me to answer with that man there's, there's so many answers there's so many what ifs that involve with that so yeah question of the day favorite generation uh, from G Bao uh, first gen again did top five gens video you can go back and watch that Mr. Chili 127 says, if you have watched Attack on Titan, what was your favorite episode? Why? If not, then why would you watch that? <laughs> if not, then would you watch that? Yeah, I read that wrong. Yeah, I already talked about that. I haven't seen it yet, but yeah. Next question comes from Zito Q. If you had three Pokemon IRL, which one would that be? Okay, that's a little bit easier to answer than six. IRL, I definitely say Gengar. Um, Scrafty. Scrafty's kind of cool IRL. Um, when I think of Pokemon IRL, you have to think of like realistic Pokemon. Like, what could you honestly, realistically keep in your house? Like, would you keep a Steelix in your house? No. You can't have a Mag Cargo in your house. That shit would just implode everything. Um, you can't keep a Gyarados. You know, you gotta be realistic with shit like that. So, like, Gengar wouldn't be hard to keep at all because he's a fucking ghost. Scrafty wouldn't be hard to keep because he's, like, a little three-foot-tall pants lizard. Um, and Polion, he's kind of big, but he wouldn't be too hard to keep. Um, like, a Zumeral. Just Pokemon that, like, practical Pokemon I wouldn't mind having. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chansey! I keep you chancy. Always keep me healthy. Anyways, uh, Skit Jamo, second question, I guess. Yeah, he's got one down below. He says, What do you really like about X and Y, and what's a couple things you change about those games or in the Pokemon franchise in general? What I like about X and Y is definitely the graphics. Um, a lot of people were upset when they heard that we're only going to get 70 new Pokemon in X and Y, and I'm like, Are you looking at the game? Like, this clearly is not a game that they brought in order to introduce a million new Pokemon. This is a game that's changing the way we play Pokemon, period. And that's what it did. You know, there's no games out there that look as good or play as good as X and Y does. And that's just because it's, I mean, I guess you can call this a beta if you want. But I'm sure, like, 7th gen is going to be fucking tits. It's going to be amazing, even better than 6th gen was. Um, and I'm sure we'll get more Pokemon than we got in 6th gen and 7th gen, probably. But, I don't know. I just felt like X and Y was there to change the way the game was, was played. Not necessarily to bring so many, like, new Pokemon and shit like that. So, I don't know why so many people were blind to that. It's just X and Y changed the way the game was played. One thing I would change about X and Y, um, the difficulty, especially with the sense of how the experience share works, I think that they should have jacked up the levels a lot higher. Like, had Diantha have like level 80s on her team or some shit, I think that would have been an actual challenge. Um, and one thing that I would change about Pokemon in general, get rid of HMs. It's really not necessary. I really don't understand why certain moves you can't delete. Or certain moves you have to have in order to get through the world. I mean, it doesn't really make sense. If I have a Scyther, I shouldn't have to teach him cut. He should just naturally be able to cut through a fucking bush. You know, shit like that. If I have a Water-type Pokemon, they should be able to surf. Period. You would think a Water-type Pokemon would know how to swim. You know, did, did in, in the anime, did Ash teach surf to his fucking Squirtle? Did, did Starmie teach surf to... Did Starmie teach surf? Did Starmie teach surf to Misty? Did Misty teach surf to Starmie? You know, shit like that. You know, it just doesn't add up, so... Yeah, we'll just get rid of HMs. Next one comes from Nigel Sinsky. I'm guessing that's how it is. What is your favorite part about the Pokemon series games? We already talked about that. Next one comes from Dark Psychic. Why do you like Gengar so much? And John Hurley comes in. He answered that multiple times. Watch his favorite Ghost Tides video. Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> um, I like Gengar a lot because he's purple. He's fucking purple. I like purple. He's like chubby. He's he's like I guess you call him cute if you wanted to. I just love how like round and chubby he is. I like the fact that he's always up to no good. Look at his like mischievous grin on his face. He's just like that nigga. That's the only way I can describe it. I just love Gengar. Everything about him, I love. I love the fact that he's a really really strong Pokemon too. Only thing I don't like about him, <sighs> oh, I guess there's two things I don't like about him. His defenses are ass. But I mean, you can't have everything. Either you're gonna be a really strong attacker or really, really bulky Pokemon, but his defenses are ass, but there's, that's easy to work around. Just smash everything in your path and you'll be good. Um, the only other thing that I don't like about him, and I think this is something that should really be updated, um, his level up moveset is complete garbage. Complete and utter ass. Um, his egg moves, Ghastly's egg moves, are all the elemental punches. Um, if they give him Sucker Punch and Shadow Punch and Shadow Claw by level up. I think Shadow Claw is level up as well. I know Shadow Punch is. They give him Sucker Punch by level up. And it doesn't make any sense why they give him all these physical moves and he's a special attacker. His, his physical attack set is complete ass. Give him a decent level up moveset for Gengar. Give him a decent level up moveset for special attacker. Because when it comes to Gengar's competitive moveset, his entire move pool is all TMs. 
with the exception of Sludge Wave, because that's 5th Gen Dream World Ghastly. But I mean, I mean, if you look at a competitive Gengar, all of his movesets, uh, Focus Blast, you teach to him. Energy Ball, if you want to run that, you want to be that guy running Energy Ball Gengar, you teach him. Dazzling Gleam, you teach him. Thunderbolt, you teach him. Shadow Ball, I think he gets by level up, but again, you can teach him that by TM. Sludge Bomb, you teach him. You know, everything is just, you, you, it's taught because his level up moveset's complete ass. So, it is what it is. It is what it is. Next comes from Team Turbo Blaze. He says, Nappy, where do you find the tracks that you use during your grinding montage? It's just music I've been listening to over the years. That's all. That's all, man. Skit Jimmo says, How come you did Omega Chats and special events for the last few milestones? You reached 40 or 50,000 subscribers. Would you stop doing that for the last few milestones? I'd love to see an officer or something, or a tutorial or something. Ah, ha, ha. Well, uh, I guess I talked about this earlier. Again, uh, or I mentioned earlier, I'm going to talk about it in Friday's video. Um, it kind of bothered me that we didn't do anything for the past ones. I think the last time we celebrated anything was 30,000. Um, yeah, I think it was 30,000. If I did something else, I forgot. Because 30,000 was the last time we did an Omega Meetup. We did an Omega Meetup for 20k, and we did... Mm, 10k, we did the Q&A. That was the first real big Q&A that we did. 15k was the uh, live mixtape. 20k was Omega, 25k was the face shape video, 30k was Omega again, because so many people missed out on it. Um, and then we really didn't do anything after that, and I think it's, I mean, I don't want to be that guy and use school as a crutch, but I think it was just because school was in the way. You know, I wanted to do things, I really, I really, really want to do some 50k, because that was like a huge milestone for me, just to sit there and say, wow, I have 50,000 subscribers. Um, for 75k, uh, I want to do something as well, um, but... Again, like just just life got in the way. That was during the time when Blaze Black was kind of spotty. Um, I actually did want to do a setup video because a lot of people have been asking for that. If you guys go back and watch the 25k face shave, you'll see the current camera I have is complete ass. Um, and I did hit up Packy Tech Support, the heated mo. Um, I did hit him up and had him look uh, for a camera for me. And uh, I think I hit him up like the day after we hit 75k and found a camera for me. And I was kind of like putt-putting around about it for a couple of days. And then by the time I actually like, okay, I'm going to get this. We were like rearing up to like 80K or some shit. And I was just like, wow, by the time I ordered this and it gets to me. Um, I think by the time I was ready to order it, we were at like 77 and a half K or 75 or 78 K or some shit like that. So many numbers. Oh my God. Um, and I was like, by the time I order this and by the time it gets sent to me, we're going to be at like 85 K or some shit like that. And it was just... It would be dumb to do a 75k special and you already have five, six thousand more subscribers than what you had when you wanted to do it. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the, the next big milestone is. So maybe 100k, we might do something. But I like, I really, really want to do something like big for 100k. I don't know. If you guys are this far into the video, leave a uh, a suggestion down below. I guess what you want to see. I know everyone wants to do a mega again. Maybe for like 90k, we'll do a mega again. But for like 100k, I, I feel like I really want to do something big, and I don't know what the hell to do. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, like, I feel bad because it's like, I feel like, I felt like that was one of those things that, like, helped make people feel, no, helped make people feel like they were a part of the channel, because it was like something that we all did together. You know, it's like, when I did the 10k Q&A, that was something that involved you guys as well. Like, I, I interacted with you guys, I did stuff that involved you guys, you got to see yourself on the channel. 15k mixtape, you know, that was something I was giving to you guys. A lot of you guys were asking for it, so I felt, again, like you guys were being involved with it. 20k Omega Meetup, like, I sat there and met you guys. Like, legit, I met you guys. Like, I remember meeting you guys, too. Um, but it's, like, again, I don't, I don't know. I, I want to do something, I want to do stuff like that again. Um kind of pisses me off that I had to stop because of school and shit, but yeah, we definitely need to get some shit like that going again, because I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. Next comes from the Taco Cat Stable, what was your favorite color before purple? Probably like, when I was a kid I liked blue a lot, then I went through a little period where I liked red, then I went back to blue, and then I think I liked black for a little while, not like I was goth or anything, it's just like black goes well with a lot of things, like black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow, just black is a real good like neutral color, it just pairs well with a lot of stuff, and then purple came along, I just like purple. Next one, are you black? Oh my lord, already answered that one. Kevin Thompson, how'd you get into Pokemon? What is your great, greatest fear? I answered that in the Emerald Egglock, the Emerald Egglock, the Emerald the Randomizer Nuzlock, and in the Platinum Egglock. What is your opinion on Bisharp? Come on, man! Seth Rubin, are your opinions on any Pokemon changed after this series? Um, Scrafty. I didn't think he was as much of a monster as he was, but he really is, so yeah. 
That Mexican kid says, can I get a shout out? LLJK, what mic do you use? I use uh, Turtle Beach PX21s as a headset. And uh, the reason I use it is for the price that you pay. I think it's like 70 bucks or some shit. It just works so well on everything. It works on PS3, Xbox, PC. Um, it works on, on most platforms and it sounds decent. I've never had anybody complain about my audio quality. I've actually had a lot of people compliment me on my audio quality. So yeah, that's what I use. I just use it because it works. Uh, I know there are better mics out there, but it just it works for me. And eventually one day I might go ahead and break down and get a better mic. But for now it works. They're not the most like reliable headsets ever. Um, I use it every single day for a couple hours a day, so I run it fucking ragged. So every couple months I gotta get a new headset, but. For me, 70 bucks for a good 3-4 months use out of a decent headset is not bad. I know for some people that's a little bit of a stretch. You might say, if I'm going to pay that much for a headset, this bitch better work for years. But with as much as I use it, I'm happy to get 3-4, maybe 5 months of use out of it before I got to go get a new one. So, I'm happy with it. But, like I said, it works well. Next one comes from Cartoon Hero TGM. He says, what is your favorite Pokemon that you have used during any LP so far over all your LPs? Oh my lord. Really, man? I'm on like LP number 20. You want me to like answer that right now? Come on, man. Come on, man. Um, Digital Ninja 11. How did you become friends with Patters? Patters and I just met through Twitter. That's all it is. Just through Twitter, man. Next question comes from Wolftail25. Question: Did you ever? Wow. Did you ever have a general idea of the type of Pokemon you wanted to pull and use in your Blaze Black Egglock? I wanted Water types so badly. I know I fucked up and killed um, Swamps the the Marsh Stop. Wow. I was gonna mix it up Swamps the Swampert and Pingu the Empoleon. But besides that, I don't think I can't think of any off the top of my head any water types that we had. And it kind of pissed me off because when I was going through the egg hatching, I'm sure you guys are watching right now, I hatched a couple Totodiles. I hatched like two or three Totodiles in the same box. There were, there were a shit ton of Poliwags. I don't know why. I've never had a, an egg lock where people sent so many Poliwags. There were a couple of Carvanas I saw in there too. Um, a few more Mudkips, but. Just, I saw like two or three Sheer Force Totodiles, and I was like, oh my god, I would have loved to have that, god damn, I would have loved to have a nice Sheer Force for Alligator, but we didn't even hatch that many fucking water types, we hatched so many fighting types in the game, and I'm just like, ah, can I get a water type, it's my favorite type, I can't get it. When is your next project? Already talk about that. Elijah Prospero says, Have you met any Pokétubers in real life? Dumb Nexus, Shofu, Hulum, Scrafty, etc. No, I have not. I've met one person from YouTube in real life. That is Jaynuk. Um, we talked about him earlier with music and whatnot. Uh, I live in Tucson, Arizona. He lives up in Phoenix, Arizona. And one weekend, you know, after like a year of knowing each other, we just decided, you know what, we live two hours apart. We need to meet. So I drove up there to meet him one day. Um, and yeah, he's the only person I've ever met from YouTube. I do plan to go to PAX uh, in, what is it, PAX East, I'm going to say PAX Prime, PAX East in Boston this year, so I'm sure I'll meet a couple more YouTubers there, uh, I think Nexus, Num Nexus is going, Sacred Fire, New Grove, Glitch City, I know Vegas Jamie, Cuddle of Death, they're all going, I'm sure there will be others that I'll meet there, those are just who I think off the top of the head, so yeah, I'm sure I'll meet people then too, but as of right now, j the only one, so yeah. Alright, next question comes from... Why or how did Gengar become your favorite Pokemon? I already talked about that. What's your favorite Mega? Mega Venusaur? What's your favorite Pokemon to play with in Pokemon Ami? Um, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't really use Ami all that often, so I, I, I don't know, I don't know. What shiny would you like to you what shiny would you most like to have on your team? Shiny Kingdra. I really, really like Shiny Kingdra and I actually have one. So uh, yeah. What was the most useful Pokemon you have used in a Nuzlocke and why? Bruce W, Gliscor. Even in Sacred Gold, we had Razor the Gliscor. He put in work then, and Bruce W puts in work now. So Gliscor just overall is a good Pokemon. He puts in work. Next question. I'm sorry, I'm drinking so much. It's just my throat is starting to get shot. An hour and a half into this is getting shot. Jay Wizzle, Jay Velez says, Nappy, the best YouTube there is. Real funny, cool, great commentary. Huge fan. Oh, thank you, man. Uh, and where there'll be other egg locks I like them the most. I'm sure we will do more egg locks in the future. Um, like I said, again, Friday update, gonna talk about it. Do you like White Kiram? Sure, why not? <laughs> um, do you like Espeon? Come on, man. Have you watched One Piece yet? If not, you might like it. I meant One Piece. No, I have not watched One Piece yet. <clears throat> um, after beating Cynthia with Scrafty, do you like Scrafty more than before? Absolutely. Ethan K, have you ever been noticed by people in real life? And would you ever do a video with a fan? I have never, ever, ever, ever been recognized on the street. 
I, I don't see why I would. I mean, I have shown my face on YouTube before. It's not a big that big of a deal. But I, I don't think my channel is big enough for that to happen. I know there are some subscribers that have tweeted at me so they live in the same city as me. But, again, I've never been recognized on the street. Never had anybody say, oh my god, you're the King Debbie. Uh, when I ever do a video with a fan, I'm sure when I go to PAX, I'm sure I'll meet some fans there. I mean, I've done the Omega videos where I record the entire session. I know we have two three-hour Omega videos on the channel that include you guys in it as well. So, yeah. What are your top 10 cute Pokemon and top 10 cool Pokemon, Abby? Come on, man. I'm not going to do that. But I will tell you right now, the cutest Pokemon period is Dano, hands down. I think that's another Pokemon that I'd have in real life. He's like a fucking dog. He's, he's awesome. He's amazing. Next question comes from Pokeflames. If you had to be a Pokemon, would it be and tell you what moves? Come on, man. What EVs? Come on, man. Ability to nature. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Why do you like history so much from Raul Garnica? Or Garnica? I guess that's how you say it. Why would you like history so much? I like history so much because, and this is the way I see it, and this is like how I try to explain to people that say they don't like history. The way I see it is history is just one big book. It's one big story. That's all it is. It's no different than if you sat down and read Harry Potter or Percy Jackson. I think it's Percy Jackson. Well, that's, that's the new series. I think that's out right now. Um, or, and this is a throwback. This is a throwback. Or throwback to me because this is what I read when I was a kid. Um, and if you guys... Uh, remember it. Um, let me know if you do a series of unfortunate events. Lemony Snicket in a series of unfortunate events. Um, if you've never heard of that series, definitely go check it out. Um, I, I mean, I figured that a lot of people remember that. I guess I don't know how 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 popular it is anymore these days. But series of unfortunate events. I mean, just just like any series that you read, um, history is divided into chapters. I mean, most history books are based upon like certain time periods. You know, American Revolution, or if you want to talk about like. Mesopotamia or shit like that. It's based upon different regions because there's so much, but it's it's just a book and it's split into chapters. Some of them might have pictures in them, some of them might not. I don't know if you're a picture type of guy, picture book type of guy, but the way that's the way I approach it is that it's just like any other book that you read. It's got a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's divided by chapters. The only difference is this is true. This is factual. This actually happened in our world. And I like the idea of that so much because it's like I'm reading about things that happen. This person was actually real. This person actually did these things. This is the account of what happened. And you know, it's just its just so interesting. It's so fascinating to me that these things happen and this is how it all played out and these wars were fought and all this stuff, you know. This is the history of us. This is the history of our planet. You know, and again, you could, you could sit there and throw the whole cliche, you know, learn from your mistakes, bullshit, and yada, 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 but that's just how I see it. I just enjoy it. I don't know why. I enjoy it. And I enjoy, like, sitting in class and just listening to the, the professor talk. And you know, tell this this tale, this story of all these things that happened and played out. I just, I just love it. I just love it. That's why. That's why. That's why. That's why. So if you don't like history or you're struggling with history, view it that way. Look at it in that sense that it's just like any other book that you read, beginning, middle, and end. Just approach it that way. I'm sure you'll be fine. Next question comes from Casey Ashby. She said, I'm guessing it's a she. Says Nappy, I know your favorite Pokemon is Gengar, but what's your favorite moves? Top three. Um, favorite moves just off the top of my head: Surf, Earthquake, and. Uh, I don't know. Surf, earthquake, and <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't have a third one. I could say like close combat or dazzling gleam or I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But surf and earthquake are definitely up there for me. Red Dawn Gaming says, other than yourself, who's the best trainer in Lumino Station? Come on, man. You can't ask me that. You can't ask me to like choose someone out over everyone else. I mean, if I had to, if you're gonna pin my arm like that, I'm gonna say, who's them scrappy? I think Callum just period. Callum is very underrated on YouTube. Um, uh, I'll include Mo's channel. I talked about him earlier. Packy Tech support. He helps me out a lot. I'll also include Callum's channel. If you guys don't know who them scrappy is, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Callum puts out some of the most amazing content I've ever seen. Like I said, he was the last LP that I've watched from beginning to end. His shit, like, I'm legit envious. I, uh, <laughs> I'm legit jealous of the stuff he puts out. His content is so top-notch, and I'd lie if I say I have not emulated him in one way or another. His shit is so amazing, just everything, the commentary, the, the graphics, just everything about the stuff he puts out. I think he's very, very underrated, and if I could swap channels with him, I would in a heartbeat. Because this man goes through so much to get his videos up. His internet is complete ass. It takes him like six hours to upload a video, but he uploads daily. So he definitely deserves a lot more than what he has. So if you guys are watching this right now and you're not subscribed to Callum, 
please check the description go check him out hit that subscribe button you will not be disappointed and i'm sure cal and i will be doing some more projects here in the future so it's not like he's going away anytime soon so yeah <laughs> go check him out next comes from lance the trainer how'd you come up with the name the king nappy mm, i already answered that the Vorge feels what is your thoughts on texas never really got people's opinions on texas so what do you so what do you of what do you think of houston in particular i don't know man <laughs> um i'm sure i've been to texas before like flying there like layovers in dallas or i'm sure i've driven through texas before I've never spent like any extended amount of time in Texas. I have family in Texas, but I mean, it's, it's just it's just a state, man. I don't like it. I don't hate it. The Kid Gamer 11 says, "Have you ever had braces? And if you have, how did you feel about them?" Also, great series, man. Watched the whole thing and enjoyed every second of it. Thank you, man. Kid Gamer, yes, I did have braces. I had braces when I was younger. I had braces for like two years or some shit like that, and I had a retainer for like a year after that. And I think I'm gonna need braces again in the future or some shit like that. I don't know. I, I don't have a perfect smile. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> My pearly whites. <laughs> Anyways, let's just stop. <laughs> but I did have I did have braces when I was a kid. Um, it really didn't mean much because I had them as a kid, and I mean, I guess kids can pick on you when you were, when you were little for having braces, but I mean, there are more people that have braces when you're a kid than when you're an adult, so, it really didn't mean much to me, I mean, it was just whatever, I guess is the best way you could say it, um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just there, I didn't mind them, I didn't hate them, I mean, I'm really just impartial to a lot of things in life, to be honest with you guys, I mean, uh, I mean, you can feel strongly about certain things, but I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just there. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it, it's just there. So yeah. Next question comes from Athena's Kiss. It says, if you were stuck on a Pokemon Island for the rest of your life, what Pokemon would you bring if the only chance for food was the most dangerous species of Pokemon out there? Those can be whatever you like to. I have no clue. I mean, you'd have to like give me a specific Pokemon because you're asking me to bring a Pokemon that can help me combat this dangerous Pokemon out there. So like... What is the most dangerous Pokemon out there? <laughs> I don't I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Cause I mean if you go based off like Pokedex descriptions, the first thing that comes to mind is Hydreigon, because he sees everything as a threat, so if I had a, if I had to take a Hydreigon, I would probably take like uh Nazumo? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Like I said, it depends on what Pokemon you're talking about. Next one comes from Disney Sucks 1001. If you could have any of your characters' voices narrate your life, who would it be? I would say Alder. <laughs> Shut up, bitch! Open the fucking door, bitch! You know, I guess Alder. Maybe, I guess. Um, Ryan Flanagan says, In all of your time playing Pokemon, what's the coolest slash weirdest nickname you have ever seen? Mmm, coolest nickname I've ever seen. I like Slurp a lot. I like Thickums a lot. Um, from someone that's not me, I'd say probably... I don't know. To be honest, I don't know off the top of my head because I mean, you battle so many people throughout the week and every day. I mean, I don't know. I see cool nicknames all the time, but I just don't remember. Remember? How do you send eggs, King Nappy? You are about a month late, Jamie Cho. <laughs> How old are you? I already answered that. Soul Survivor. Oh, I see what you did there. Boom, boom. The Nin says, "What made Gengar your favorite Pokemon?" I already talked about that. What do you think of the new trio in X and Y? I already talked about that as well. Legend of Zelda fan 1000, what was your first Pokemon game and what star did you choose? I mean, I don't remember which one it was exactly, I don't remember what starter either. So sorry, if it was yellow then it would have been Pikachu, but like I said, it was it was Gen 1, but I don't remember if it was yellow or blue version. It was one of those two. Alexis Campo says, how did you meet Callum? Callum followed me on Twitter one day, like 10 months ago or some shit. I remember I was sitting here because I remember watching it on TweetDeck um, and I saw it pop up. Because I remember because his Twitter name used to be I Hump Sheep. <laughs> and that's a very unique Twitter name, so I remember that specifically when it popped up, and I was just like, well, alrighty then, he's got a funny name, and uh, I think I checked out his channel, and he had like 1,200 subs or some shit like that, uh, he was scrubbish back then, <laughs> he's gonna hate me for that, he was scrubbish back then, and um, I think he followed me for like two or three weeks before I followed him back, and we just kind of like just started talking from there, like he would reply to my tweets and I would reply to him, and we just kind of started talking from there, and that was just it. <laughs> That's how I met him. It was just through Twitter. Um, next question comes from Rex17. Oh my lord, those numbers. Do you play any TCG games, trading card games? No, I do not actively play trading card games. 
Uh, the only trading card game that I ever actively played was Yu-Gi-Oh! for a couple years when I was younger. Um, I do still have a lot of Pokemon cards, I just collect them from, from now and then. Every couple months I get back into like collecting Pokemon cards, and I'll go hard at it for like a month and then I'll just stop for another couple months, but yeah, that's about the extent of any TCG that I have. Next question comes from Gordon Siberas. He says, have you ever thought about hacking and creating your own Pokemon game? I mean, thoughts crossed my mind, and I've had people like offer to do it for me too, but I just don't have the time. I, it's legit. I don't have the time to sit and learn like all, all the things that I would need to make it. I don't have the, the time to actually make it myself, so if I had if I did that, I'd have to get like a team of people together, and we'd have to come up with like the best ROM hack ever. Best ROM hack ever! Some shit like that, so yeah. Next comes from Psychiatric Gamer says, "Are you gonna do a face cam again on your plague on your playground? Ah, uh, playthrough. And what is the next project playthrough that you got planned? Friday. Oh my lord! I said this in the last episode. <laughs> I said it in this episode. This Friday we're gonna talk about all that. But I'm guessing everyone doesn't watch it all the way through, so I can't get mad. Next question comes from Liam B. Says, "Was there ever a moment when you realize that you're talking to tens of thousands of people on the internet, but you have no clue who the majority of them are? Is it weird feeling talking to a mic?" No, it is not, Liam B. And the reason I say that is, I mean, I, I like to reference what I said earlier, how it's it's no different now than it was back when I had like a thousand subs, because like the method of what I'm doing hasn't changed. I still sit down, I still play Pokemon, I still just be myself, I still just say whatever comes to mind. I record it, uh, put it together, and upload it to YouTube. Um, I'm aware that there's more people now, but at the same time, it's not like it's anything different because. You know, I'm just, I'm here, in the room, by myself, recording, and it's like, the notion that I've had since day one on YouTube is that some people are going to like me, some people are going to dislike me. That's just how it is. You can't please everybody. So, with that in mind, I can just be whatever I want to be. I don't have to sit here and think, oh wow, I can't say this because it's going to offend somebody. No matter what you say, you're going to offend somebody. So you shouldn't, like, censor yourself with the off chance that, oh my god, so many people are going to hate me for saying this. People are going to hate you no matter what. So just be yourself, say what you want, say what you feel, and just go from there. So, is it weird or awkward that I'm talking to tens of thousands of people? Not at all. Not at all, not at all, not at all, not at all, not at all. Next question comes from Scott Sellers. Question, have you grown respect for Sceptile after this lock? Kind of already answered that in the last couple episodes. I mean, Sceptile is Sceptile. That's what it is. It's what it is! What it is! Next question comes from Ruthless Braviary. What's your real name? Also, you're going to do a Draw My Life. Uh, I already talked about the first one, Draw My Life. Um, maybe, eventually, a lot of people have asked me for that, so that might be one of the, like, milestone specials that we do here soon, I might do it, uh, my life has not been, like, really, really, like, dramatic, like, you watch a couple of these people's draw my life, and it's just, like, they've been through hell and back, I haven't really been through hell and back, but I'm sure that I could relate to some people on some different levels, so I'm sure I'll do one, but, yeah, eventually. Liam B says, personal question incoming, who was the first girl you ever liked and how did you meet her? I want specific, Snappy. Um, well, if you want the crush chick, the Kimberly chick, I don't even know if her name was Kimberly, just like the name Kimmy stands out in my head, I don't know why. And Kimmy is short for Kimberly. Um, but yeah, I currently talked about that, and I don't really have specifics because it was third grade. <laughs> that was years ago. Next question comes from Instead HD. Would you consider doing uh, merchandise, t-shirts, etc.? That's another thing we could do for a certain milestone. I've had people ask me to do that before. Like, um, people have said that I can make What's Good YouTube t-shirts, or I can make, uh, t-shirts that say only you can prevent loss, save data, or some shit just like the sayings that I say on all my episodes. I guess we can make, uh, shit like that happen, I don't know. Next question comes from Apocalyptic Monkey. What kind of Pokemon would you like to see in the future? Example, typings, animals, evolutions, megas, and myths. I'd like to see a gorilla Pokemon. Maybe for, like, uh, the legendary trio, we could have a trio of gorillas. Uh, typings, again, water, fire, animals, maybe, like, dolphins, too, I don't know, evolutions, I don't really, I don't really know, off the top of my head, I have to, like, stand and look at all the Pokemon to see who I want to get Evos for. Next question comes from S Jamie, or Javi, Javi, Stewart, spiders, snakes, cockroaches, creepy crawlers, too. Okay, my concho says, that's Excel with three poke snappy, no one will ever do that again, yeah, I'm sure people will. Um, but thank you. <laughs> the Shadow Blast 123 says, if you had to make a Pokemon game, what place would it be based off of? I would do Rome. Rome would not be bad. Um, let's go with Africa. South America. Or Antarctica. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, Jack Stafrook 
Stefarak says, if you had to choose between gasoline and Umbreon, what would you choose? But gasoline has lick and can never learn any of the move. Moving on, Genius Gamer Gino says, how'd you get into Pokemon? <laughs> I already kind of answered that. Would you and XY Egglock, if possible, I don't understand how eggs to send yet. I have seen a couple of people do uh, X and Y Egglocks. Uh, I think that would be a lot of work to get done. Like, uh, it would be so much more work than a regular uh, Egglock would be, so I think I would wait until we can get 3DS ROMs, because as of right now, there are no 3DS emulators. If you're watching anybody play X and Y on YouTube, they have a capture card or a capture board installed on their 3DS, and they're playing it on their actual 3DS. It's not on the PC. Um, so I'm sure that once people get um, the emulators working on PC, it'll be easier to do Egglocks, and or if maybe if someone finds an easy way to get eggs into the actual game on X and Y, then it would happen. But as of right now, I don't know um, how to do it, but I'm not saying that it's impossible. Ryan Hoffman says, iPod or Android, you're a beast, snappy, love your videos. Well, thank you, man, and I would hate, oh my god, it's like PS3 versus Xbox. I don't really want to get into this, but I'm just going to go ahead and say that I personally use Android. My phone is the Galaxy Note 3. I am in love with it. I enjoy it very thoroughly, um, but does that mean that I would never, ever, ever use an iPhone? No, but like I said, I'm happy. I am more than content with my phone right now. It does everything I need to do and more. So, I'm just gonna leave with that. Lightning Storm 2010 says, Do you like Typhlosion? Sure, he's great. Um, Jamie O0, have you met up with any of your fellow PokeTubers in real life? If not, are you ever planning to? Um, already answered that one, kinda. John the GTFO Gamer says, Do you think that the era of fan added difficulty like Blaze Black is over now that we run Pokemon games through 3DS, or do you think that someone in the Pokemon community will create intensified versions of future games? <gasps> Love your vids, they make my day. Well, thank you, man. Um, no, fan added games are not done. Uh, there are people that are still working on like third gen ROM hacks because third gen is so easy to, um, like modify and shit. So, no, I don't think that it's over at all. And eventually, somebody will make a, a working or a decent 3DS emulator and they will mod the fuck out of it if it's easy. Because I think there are people who are just now getting into like fourth gen ROM hacks. Because, like, and when I say like getting into it, like, I know there's Blaze Black and I know that there's, um, like Hoenn White. I know Calum's doing that. But those games aren't really like drastic changes. Like the map hasn't been changed or anything like that. Whereas if you go play like a third gen game, you know, there's clearly changes to the map or a first gen or, or, or anything like that. The older gens, it's easier to like actually mod the game and have like different things that you want. Um, like Ash Gray, for example. Ash Gray is a third gen ROM hack. I think it's a fire red ROM hack. But like the entire game has been redone. Like that's not um, the Kanto region that you're going through. Well, technically it is, you know, because it's based off the anime, but still, it's not the same map, the same layout that you would in, in, um, Fire Red. Um, I think I saw some screenshots a couple months ago of people actually, like, uh, fooling around with, like, Diamond and Pearl. Like, they're just now getting into 4th Gen ROM hacks, and I can tell you right now, if they get their shit together, 4th Gen ROM hacks are gonna be the future. Because, I mean, it's fun to play, like, Blaze Black and shit, but, like, the storyline's the exact same, all it is just increased difficulty. Legit, that's all that Blaze Black is. It's the only difference between... Blaze Black and regular Black version is just increased difficulty. Um, so if they can get their shit together for 4th Gen, that would be nice to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next question comes from Nathaniel Robbers, Robbers. It says, favorite Pokemon that died? Nifty. Julio, oh, Julio, Julio. <laughs> so Mozo, what are you planning on doing after college? I have no clue, man. Getting a job, doing the, the regular 9 to 5 thing everyone else does, I guess. Gar, Foom, Falumf says, Nappy, when you become a teacher, will you tell your students about your YouTube channel? If that ever happens and I do become a teacher, I guarantee you I will not be doing YouTube. I'm sure I'll mention it. Like, I can say, like, back then I did this, but I'm sure my channel won't still be around by then. So, I don't know. Next question comes from Foxstream. She is a very active subscriber. She's got 11 lines. Oh my lord. I have so many questions. She says, When is the last time that you felt your friends are better friends with each other than with you? When's the last time you felt you weren't good enough? What do you consider to be your best trait? Have you watched a uh, Mi Miyazaki? Hello, I don't know what. What? If so, what was it? What was your favorite? What is your favorite Disney movie? Favorite food? Favorite pizza topping? It can be in any anime universe. Where did you go and why? What abilities would you like to have in said universe? How is Sadie? What Pokemon death made you feel the saddest in this LP? I suppose you don't know me well enough, but what Pokemon did you compare me to? Okay, so let's tackle this one. <laughs> Oh, um, Fox Stream, she's a great person. She's a good subscriber. I talk to her a lot. She says, When's the last time you felt that your friends were better friends with each other than with you? Doubt. Like I mentioned earlier, doubt is a natural human emotion. That's, that's, you're going to doubt a lot of things in life. So, something like that. I mean, I don't know off the top of my head when that's happened. I'm sure 
I'm sure that thought might cross my mind daily, but I don't really think about it, I just put it on my head because it's just doubt. And something like that doesn't really need to be addressed because you could just be overthinking, yada yada yada, but like I said, doubt is human emotion, so I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. When's the last time you felt like you weren't good enough? Um, again, that's doubt. You know, I can look at my, like, for example, my X and Y Wi-Fi battles. I really do not like my X and Y Wi-Fi battles. I feel like the quality, and I'm working on that as well, I just feel like the quality isn't there, I feel like my commentary isn't there, I feel like I don't know enough about competitive, so I guess if you want to say that, then, sure. What do you consider to be your best trait? Um, best trait is if I'm, if I want to do something, I can apply myself to it. And if I want to do something, I want to do a great job on it, I'm going to apply myself to it, I'm going to give it like 2,000% and put out the best product that I possibly fucking can. At the same time, it's a double-edged sword because if I don't give a fuck about it, then I'm not going to do shit. Fuck that. <laughs> um, I don't know what me Miyazaki Gil Gilby is, so I, I can't really answer that. If, if it is something, that I, it might be something that I know, I just don't recognize the name. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. What's your favorite Disney movie? Hercules, hands down. Maybe Mulan too. Those are those are two great movies. Favorite food? I don't know. Maybe a good burger. I don't know. I like food. Period. Favorite pizza topping? Black olives, followed closely by pepperoni. If you can be in any anime universe, where would you go and why? What abilities would you like to have in said universe? If I had to go to any anime universe, I would definitely go to um, either Soul Eater or Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Just because I think it would be sick as fuck to fight like they do in Soul Leader or to be an alchemist like in uh, Full Metal Alchemist. That would be sick as fuck. What abilities would you have? That, that's I, I kind of just answered that. How is Sadie? Sadie is doing great. She is knocked the fuck out in the bed behind me right now. She is in La La Land. Just dozing off. What Pokemon death made you feel the saddest since LP? Nifty. The Scrafty, hands down. I suppose you don't know me well enough. What Pokemon would you compare me to? I mean, you got a Vulpex chilling right there. So I'd say maybe a nine tails with the, the flourishing tails behind behind you. I guess that's what I compare you to. I don't know. I don't know. Normally I load all the questions at once. I don't know why I didn't this time just to like get an idea of where I'm at. But I know we're we're pushing two hours right now. But let's just keep chugging along. Ryan makes meow. Ryan Mackey's mo. I don't know. <laughs> Would you consider playing a different game like Minecraft? I've actually done Minecraft LPs in the past on my channel. I think I probably did the videos for different reasons, but I have played Minecraft before. I have done LPs. I think I did two um, adventure maps and survival maps, um, but I have played Minecraft in the past. I actually I do have Pixelmon live streams on my channel. I did one Pixelmon live stream with Kristen and another with Kristen and Callum. That was actually the first like product or content on YouTube that Callum and I ever did together was that Pixelmon live stream. So if you go back on the channel and see that, then you can see how awkward Callum and I were when we first met <laughs> each other. So yeah, uh, but I have played Minecraft in the past. I'm not a huge like Minecrafter, but I mean it's not something I would completely rule out in the future. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Cyrus Claudio says on a scale of one to Google Plus has done to YouTube. How much do you hate Umbreon and what is a good competitive wall to use? Umbreon is ass. I don't like it. What is a good Pokemon? What is a good competitive quality? Well, stop. Umbreon is not ass. It's a good Pokemon for what it's used for. I just don't like it, so I call it ass. So, yeah. What is a good competitive wall to use? Special wall, Gudra, physical wall, Weezing, or uh, Gastrodon. So, yeah. Chance Hill says, if you could change one thing about Gengar's design, what would it be? Or would you leave it the way it is? Leave it the way it is. It's amazing. I love him. The amazing gamer says, sorry, just took down. Sorry, just looked down. Has to put QA. What? He's got he's got another question down there. We'll get to him again in a minute. <laughs> DC Lyric says, What current OU Pokemon do you think deserves a ban? Kinda of already talked about that. Uh Lucarionite. So I guess Lucario and by by relation. Jeffrey Stamp says, How do you stay so excited about Pokemon all the time? Don't you just get tired of it? I mean, I'm a huge fan of the series. I like playing Pokemon. And as long as you play it in moderation, and which is, you know, a couple times a day, I guess, in moderation if you want <laughs> to say that, I mean, it's it's a game that I enjoy. So, I mean, I'm just going to play it. That's, that's all I can say. Like I said, I took a five-year break from it or something like that. So, I'm still loving it. I'm sure eventually I'm going to get to the point where I'm just bored with it and I might put it down for a while. I don't know. We'll see. But I just enjoy it. So, yeah. Then the Amazing Gamer says, if Pokemon disappeared, would you be doing YouTube or what games would you play? If Pokemon wasn't around, I mean, that's, that's a big what if, you know, would there be something that would replace it? Or would I be playing that right now? Um, I can guarantee you right now I probably wouldn't be doing YouTube if this channel hadn't taken off the way it had. Because, like, I was at my wit's end with Call of Duty. 
I did vlog for a little while there, but I was just at my wit's end with YouTube completely because it just wasn't working for me. I wasn't getting my snowball rolling. But Pokemon picked up for me, and we're here now. So if that hadn't happened, I probably wouldn't be doing YouTube. So, yeah. The Sableye guy says, What Pokemon do you want to get a Mega Evolution? Why? Excluding top five potential Magic Evos. For me, it would be Sableye. PSU, my favorite YouTuber. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just strictly based off design, I want to see Spear Tomb and Cathagrius. I want to see the mummy come out of the, out of the tomb, out of Cathagrius. Again, Cathagrius is a good physical wall. Just talked about that, too. Cathagrius is a good physical wall. Um, Florgus is a good special wall, too. Sylveon's a good special wall too, and there's, there's a lot of walls on, on YouTube, on YouTube, there's a lot of walls, period. Um, but Mega Evolution, just, I mean, I don't know without looking up stats, but just design-wise, I'd say Cathagrius and, uh, Spiritomb, I'd like to see Spiritomb, like, make it evolve into, like, this giant, like, either, like, spirit galaxy thing, or into, like, a genie, or some shit like that, I don't know. Next, we have Metal, Metal Nopi. What made you start posting videos on YouTube? Kind of already talked about that. And what do you recommend for newer channels doing for Pokemon LPs? Kind of already talked about both of those earlier, so yeah. Why don't you do stuff with Big Country anymore? I spoke about that in the Sacred Gold Q&A. If you want to talk, if you want to know all that, go back and watch that. I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, what is your name? Are you talked about that? What's your real name? Are you talked about that? Jordan Guthrie says, Hey Nappy, would you ever do a Wonder Trade Nuzlocke of Pokemon X and Y? Already talked about that. <laughs> this is the part where we just we've gone through so many questions already that we're just starting to get repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. What made you get into YouTube? Best ending ever, bro. Thank you. Are there any Pokemon besides your favorite Pokemon that you like? And if you can make a new move, would it be called Gengar? I believe this new move would be called Gengar Destroys All. It's a one-hit KO move with 100% accuracy and affects all types. Oh, I take <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head. Blazing Charizard says, I know you watch Brotherhood, but have you watched the original Full Metal Alchemist? There's a much different story after halfway through. No, I have not watched the original one yet. I actually just finished Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood a couple days ago. Um, I'm finishing up Death Note right now. I started Death Note like four months back, and I got like halfway through it and just stopped. So I just uh, started rewatching it now, and I'm back up to about the same point. And I'm going to finish that next. And I think after this, I'm probably going to watch Sword Art Online. So yeah, so yeah, so yeah. I got a whole list on my Tumblr and shit, but of course, Tumblr, Twitter, all that shit's in the description, you can go check it out. Um, you don't have to check out Tumblr if you don't want to, Tumblr's kinda like just there. Uh, but I would definitely suggest following on Twitter, that is legit, like, I don't I don't put it there just for my health, I don't run a Twitter just for my health. Um, if you wanna talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, you can do it there, as long as you're not talking some bullshit, we can have nice conversations. If you wanna set up Wi-Fi battles, you can hit me up there, if I'm available or free at the time, I'm more than happy to Wi-Fi battle you guys. Just Twitter's the shit. Like it's literally up to up to the second updates. Like if anything goes wrong or Blazeback's not gonna be up one day, I'll tweet it out and say Blazeback's not gonna be up tomorrow. And you don't have to sit here and wonder where's Blaze Black? Where's Blaze Black? Or not Blaze Black since it's over. But you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. Next question comes from uh, Isaac Patterson. How old are you and what's your favorite starter for each gen? Wow, 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 wow. Already did that. Already answered both of those. How old are you? I'm 21 and I did the top five starters video, and I'm pretty sure. Each gen made it on there. Well, there's five out of six. Just, just, just choose the water types, man. <laughs> I like water types the most. Um, Treveno286 says, "How many, how many Gengars does it take to screw in a light bulb? Just one. He can float up the screen." Cobalion, uh, Cobalon, I guess. If Drano made a hack for X, if a Drano hack for X and Y comes out, what do you think it'll be like? It'll be harder. <laughs> it'll be harder. That's all I can say. Matthew Gonzalez says, out of Mario, Sonic, and Mega Man, what is your favorite and why? Probably Mario. I was never really that big into Sonic and Mega Man when I was a kid. I was more so into Mario, so yeah, PK Sparks. I was the original that hotness, man. <laughs> Next question comes from uh, Free For All 11 Clan. What is your favorite Pokemon apart from Gengar? A dragon. I did the top 10 favorites already. Gnarly Punk Rocker, or Roker, because there's no C. This man right here is legit my oldest supporter, period. This man subscribed to my old channel back when I had like two months in on YouTube. And this man has been around ever since. My lord, he is the support is real with this guy. Uh, but he says, did you hear any of the mysterious booms or see any of the blazes of light across the sky in Tucson a few weeks ago that were being reported? Nope. <laughs> Though I did not. Um, I, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> I heard about it, but I didn't see it, so no. The Silent Gamer HD says, good stuff, bro. Keep with the good content. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Would you rap with someone if you can? Mm, yeah, I've done raps with the people before. <laughs> Um, Photo Dragon 3000 says, "Do you think Swampert and my favorite Sceptile should get a Mega Evo, and what should be their typing?" Um, Sceptile, I think if you got a Mega Evo, he should be like either Grass Dark or Grass Dragon, and Sceptile, I think he should keep his typing. 
and a lot of people joke that Mega Swampert would get Sap Super. If he got Sap Super, he would automatically ban the Ubers. Because that is so OP. He has no weaknesses. Nothing, there's almost nothing that can one-shot a Mega Swampert. Because Swampert himself is bulky. Swampert is a good physical wall. You want to talk about walls. Swampert is a good physical wall. And Swampert gets Stealth Rocks too. A Mega Swampert would just be ridiculous. He would be ridiculous. Especially with Swamp, uh, Sap Super. Unless they like got rid of one of his typings. Which I don't really see happening. Because that's like what he's known for being water ground. But still. Swampert should get a Mega Evolution, but keep his type, and should get a boost in attack and small boost in special defense so he could uh, tank energy balls and get Mold Breaker as an ability. And Sceptile should get a Mega and should become a Dragon Grass type and get a small boost in physical and special attack. Alright then, buddy. Uh, Tomato HD, this guy's been around for a while now. He he was actually in the uh, first Omega meetup and he uploaded the video of it. And a lot of people went over and checked him out. He's like, You got me my first 50 subscribers, Nappy. And I was like, Oh. <sighs> I think that's what happened. I don't remember exactly. But he says, what are your plans for the future? How do you expect 2014 to go for you? Great series, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Plans for the future and how do I expect 2014 to go? I want to go super duper hard at YouTube like we did last summer. I want us to like emulate how last summer was. I want to get back to the streaming two, three times a week. Get the live LPs back up. All that shit. Um, dive into some new projects, some new LPs. I just, I just, I have high hopes for 2014. And I'm very, very optimistic about it. Hipster Jesus says, how did you get into playing Pokemon on your channel when you originally played Call of Duty? I already kind of talked about that. The Running Man says, hashtag Ass Nappy. Oh my god, that's a throwback. Do you think you can start up Minecraft again or the Ass Nappy series again and maybe a further LP with a fan? Um, Minecraft again, we already kind of talked about that. The Ask Nappy series. Uh, I stopped doing Ass Nappy because there wasn't enough support for it. Like, people enjoyed watching it, and, like, the views and the ratings and everything were there. But, like, I would tweet out asking for questions and nobody would reply. And I can't do Ask Nappy without questions, and I'm sure that if I started up now, people would enjoy it, but, I don't know, I don't know, maybe. Maybe I'll talk about it in the, in the update video and see what everyone's thoughts are about it. If you don't know what Ask Nappy is, you can go back and watch it. It's on uh, this channel and my old channel. It was just a series where people would ask me questions and I would give you, like, ridiculous answers. That's really all it was, so. You can watch it if you want, and, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just really is what it is. I mean, I don't know. I guess it didn't really fit because it's like this is a Pokemon channel and that's like a vlog series, so it just doesn't really like mesh well. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well, I do a further LP with a fan. I mean, it's kind of hard to do that because it's like doing LPs with subscribers. Like the difference between doing LPs with subscribers and doing LPs with like other YouTubers. Like other YouTubers kind of generally know what they're doing. And I'm not trying to say like subscribers are like dumbasses or anything, but it's like. It's like a standard of quality type thing. Like, I know Kristen does her, like, Team Happy Day Skype calls and shit like that, and I might be able to do something like that in the future, but we just have to, like, sit down and think about it and organize something like that, so we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. <coughs> Christian Android says, What was your favorite Pokemon you used in this Egglock? Nifty, hands down. J Mill says, What's the next play, let's play you're doing? Wait till Friday, man. Thomas Meyer, geez, I don't know what the hell that is. My my dude, I'm sorry. Do you have an email that we can send stuff to? I have a fan made comic starring you that I want to send you. It's really funny. NappyTheGreat at gmail.com. I guess is the best way you can send it to me. I mean, again, Twitter. If it's just um, images and shit, you can just link them to me on Twitter. That's, again, instant. I can see it right then and there. I don't have to wait for me to check my email because I almost never check that email. So, <laughs> it is what it is. EruptingFish99 says, Hey Nabby, please answer, what is your favorite fairy type Pokemon, new or old remakes into fairy? I did the top five fairy types, man! Slurpuff is the answer, though. Ripping in the house. What is the next Pokemon LP you'll be doing? If you don't feel like telling us, can you give us a hint? Just wait till Friday! Oh my god, I feel like a broken record. I said it so many times. Update video on Friday, update video on Friday, update video on Friday. Nobody listens, man, nobody listens. Afraid of Moose says, "Love the series, Nappy." My question would be, you being a male who's getting older and more of an uh, more of an adult, let's play. We know you're a kid at heart, LOL. But you getting older, would you consider slowing down to eventually find a girl and eventually start a family? Not with me, of course, but just out of curiosity. Um, I mean, I'm not like that old yet. That I mean, I know there are people like younger than me that have got married. I know there are people around my age that are getting married, but it's like, I, I guess I've just lived life one day at a time. And if I ever got that serious with somebody and that I wanted to like settle down and have a family, I don't really see why I would have to stop YouTube to do it. Um, I know that it would probably like impede upon like whatever series I have going at the time. And if I, if I had to put YouTube on hold for a little bit, I could, but I don't really see the need to like stop YouTube completely just because I get married. Like the fuck. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Christian Andre says, "What's your favorite Pokemon using this lock?" Uh, Nifty, hands down. 
Blake Newton says this is the best stuff he ever watched. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. George Ramirez, Soul had a good run. True, 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 true. And Angel Pagan says, Nappy, you're the man. Not trying to get mushy. Well, thank you. But your videos helped me through a tough time during the second quarter. Like, giving me something to get my mind off the problems I had. Well, that's good to hear, man. Good to hear. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you had something to get you through it. And you say, my question, when you're old and retired from YouTube. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> what is the one thing you think you would look back on and remember the most? Definitely the interaction. Like, the Omega meetups. It is mind-blowing. It is mind-blowing. Like, when I do an Omega meetup, and, like, so many people come out to meet you. Like, I'm on Omega for, like, four hours. And even at the end of four hours, there are still people there, like, oh, my God, I missed Nappy. I didn't get to see him. Yada, yada, yada. And it's, like, just that interaction, just that immediate interaction with fans is just, like, wow. Like, it's so humbling. Like, it's just, wow. Like, I think, like, the Omega meetups are definitely my favorite thing I've ever done on the channel. And it's just, it's so humbling. It's just, like, that's all I can say. It's just, wow. Like, I... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, that's all I can say. Besides Umbreon, what Pokemon is the most annoying for you in Wi-Fi battles? Probably, like, Eevee Light -like Chansey. <laughs> Eevee Light -like Chansey is annoying as hell. Just, just, really, really tanky Pokemon are annoying to deal with. Um, Avery Valar, or VR, says, Would you rather never be able to own your favorite Pokemon, or have to use that one Pokemon for the whole LP? Uh, well, I've done that before. I did the Gengar Solar Run, so... <laughs> I mean, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't really mind using it for the whole LP. Who is your favorite Pokemon rival from Tayo Blah? Um, probably Silver, I think it's Silver from 2nd Gen, the Redhead, I think, I, I guess we could say that. Fire Manatee, because I mean, there's only two rivals. There's Gary in, in the 1st Gen, or if you want to call it Gary, Blue from 1st Gen, and then Silver in 2nd Gen, and after that, you don't really have a rival. You have Wally, May, and Brendan. And then 4th gen, you have... What the hell is his name? Is it Wally again? I don't know what that guy's name is. From 4th gen. The annoying kid, and then, and then 5th gen again. You don't really have rivals, they're just your friends from there on out. So, yeah. Like, you don't even get to name them either, that sucks. Oh, God. Oh, well. Oh, well. <clears throat> Fire Manatee says, what is the legit best Pokemon you've ever used, not including Legends? Um, I guess Gudra. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I've used a lot of, of, of Pokemon in the past, so it's, it's hard for me to sit there and just say the best Pokemon ever, but I'm really, really impressed with Gudra. Tucker Sal says, How'd you meet Callum or Hoodlum Scrafty? I already talked about that. Nicola Nazario says, Is Lumio Station stressful to maintain with so many people working with it? Does it affect your overall work, life, and school ethic? And is the station worth it? The station is absolutely worth it. Absolutely. And I do not regret starting Lumio Station at all. Or, or being a part of the new station, I should say. Um, but of course, it's just a little stressful because we have such a large group of people. Um, but we wanted to have twice daily uploads across the channel for the entire week, and that's not possible unless you have a lot of people. So we have the 12 directors that we have. I think it's 13 if you include me or some shit like that. I don't remember off the top of my head. It's either 12 or 13. So we have a very large group of people, and it's difficult to manage at times, but at the same time, it's definitely worth it. Um, is it stressful to manage? At times, it can be. Um, but I don't think a lot of people realize that I put in a lot of work at Lumino Station. Um, I'm the one that uploads everything on the channel. Um, I'm at every single prison podcast, whether I'm on it or not. There's got to be someone there to push the go live button and end the stream button. Um, I edit the top 10 that goes up every week. People just send me the audio and I upload it. Um, I edit the X and Y co-op between me and Kristen, which I'm going to talk about that on Friday. Don't worry about it. I'm going to talk about that. But I edit that and upload it. You know, I do. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes on Lumino Station, but it's absolutely worth it. Um, it's, it's great to come together because it's like we're all helping each other out. We're all helping each other push our own snowballs. And at the same time, we're helping out smaller YouTubers too, smaller than us, because we do the um, Friday submissions. And I wish it, we could do something more than just Wi-Fi battles, but like we can't feature LPs. You know what I mean? So it's kind of hard to do that. So we're just, Lumio Station, it, it is what we meant it to be. And uh, it's all your support is greatly appreciated. We try and do as many community events as we can. You know, the tag lock, the tournaments, shit like that. We just appreciate it. Appreciate the support. It's a lot of work, but we appreciate the support you guys show. Next comes from Austin Spencer. What exactly inspired you to start posting your Pokemon gameplay to YouTube? Kind of talked about that. Where and when did it all start? We talked about that. Not asking anything too personal, so you don't have to go into detail. Thank you. Are you talking about that, man? Raging Dolphin for me says, What was your least and most favorite Pokemon that you hashed in this LP? By the way, congrats on being the like, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Favorite is easily nifty. Least favorite. I mean, I don't know. That's kind of just like a nail in the coffin because everyone's going to assume I hate that Pokemon. So just for GP, I'm going to go ahead and say Terra the Beldum because I really, really love Metagross, but it was modest and it's like, what? 
<laughs> like, Metagross is a pseudo known for his attack and defense, so like an adamant Metagross is perfect, but modest is just not, so. Sakib uh, L says, Nappy, what do you think about fairy typing coming into the game? I think it's cool that dragons aren't OP anymore and Wi Fi is more dynamic, but in my opinion, I think all the new 6th gen fairy Pokemon look like ass. Like, the fuck is an aromatease? LOL, keep up the good work, bro. Um, personally, I, I'm one of those people that don't think that dragons were ever that big of a deal to begin with. I never really had that big of an issue with dragons. Um, because of the fact that they are one of the smallest types in the game. Like, I think the smallest type right now is Ghost, I think, followed by Fairy, or maybe Fairy's the smallest type followed by Ghost. But dragons are like the lowest five of all the types or some shit. There's not that many dragons out there. Because they don't introduce that many each gen. I think there's a total of maybe like 35, maybe 40 dragons total in the game. So, I don't think dragons are that big of an issue. I don't think they're that big of an issue that you need to introduce an entirely new type to combat them. I don't think you need to at all because you gotta think about it, you gotta think about it. In order to balance out the game by introducing fairy types, purely to counter fucking dragon types, dragon types are the highest attackers in the game, but steel types are the highest defense in the game, and steel types got a nerf in their defense too. Of course, they got a little bit of, of a boost because they're super effective against fairy, but at the same time, they dropped their resistance to dark and ghost. So that kind of sucks, because the introduction of Fairy not only has it nerfed Dragons, but it's also nerfed Steel. I mean, it's made Steel a little more important because, you know, it's super effective against Fairy, but at the same time, Steel can't take uh, Ghost and Dark Hits as well anymore. So, you know, I mean, it kind of kind of sucks. I mean, it's, it's kind of sort of balanced, but at the same time, like I said, I don't think it was that needed. That, you know, I don't, I don't personally, I don't think Dragons were that big of a threat that a whole new typing was needed, but again, like before, I'm not going to sit here and try and speak authoritatively on competitive because I'm not super duper into competitive and shit like that, so yeah, that's why. Next question comes from uh, Thomas Marsh. If you could introduce a new Pokemon type, what would it be? I already talked about that. Curse and Savage. Now, out of all the Pokemon you lost in your let's play, which one do you hate having lost the most? I already talked about that. Most disappointing lock for me, what lock did you done? I already talked about that. Oh my god, you guys! Uh, Albert Kramer says, if you had to make your own Pokemon out of water fire type, wow, what type would it be? Aesthetics, name even? If you had to make your own Pokemon out of water fire type, um, I mean, I guess we kind of already talked about that, like the gorilla Pokemon, the dolphin Pokemon, shit like that. How did you get your YouTube started? I already talked about that. Kevin Black, are you strictly a PokeTuber now? Also, number one place you like to travel to? Probably Japan. Japan seems like a very interesting place I like to check out, just the culture and everything will be nice to visit and learn about. Are you strictly a Poketuber now? For the most part, I'd say yes, I am a Poketuber. I mean, it doesn't mean that I will never upload anything else again, ever in my life, but I'm just, I do, I'm enjoying my channel as Pokemon. That's what got the ball rolling and I enjoy it, so that's what I'm gonna do. Give me a reply on Twitter. Hive, <laughs> Hive, I don't know, I don't know how to pronounce your name, bro, just tweet at me. Olivia Caballero says, how do you feel about the tag log that you did over on Lumio Station? What did you like about it and what did you least like about it? What I like about it was the fact that it's the biggest tag lock that I've ever seen done. I know we did the Emerald tag lock a while back, but that was just, what, like five of us or some shit like that? Um, but I liked, I liked the fact that we had so many people involved in it. At the same time, I think that was the, that was our, that was the worst part about it was because it was hard to get the save file through 12 different people all at once and get 18 parts recorded. Um, there was a little bit of miscommunication between us. I'm sure you guys saw certain parts of it weren't randomized. Certain like HM slaves were used, and certain Pokemon that were dead were brought back. We were just it was just miscommunication. Um, but uh, like I said, it's just a learning experience. We'll take that and grow from it. And the next time we do a tag lock, it'll be even better. But that's probably the only thing I didn't like about it was just the miscommunication that we had. But yeah, I liked it overall. It was great. It was great. It was great. A lot of people enjoyed it. It, it was. Uh, um, received very well, so I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. What not? All right, good luck there, bullshit. Roberto Sandberg says, Hey Nappy, if you could be a pro- Oh, that's too generic. Hey Nappy, if you could be a serial mascot, which one would you be? Oh my lord. Um, probably... Um... Tony the Tiger. <laughs> Tony the Tiger, I guess that's who I'd be. I'm great! I don't know, let me stop. <laughs> Um, Highway Stewart says, where in, in light, where the live in real life? What do for a living if you had to pick a Pokemon to take with you for one? Okay, sorry. Sorry, can't do that one. 
Um, Kiza says, what is your opinion on the current OUTR? I honestly think it's completely dominated by frogs, birds, and washing machines. Well, Rotom Wash has been OU for a while now. He's been there. Frogs, you're just talking about Greninja, Talonflame, and Rotom Wash. I mean, they're popular. Of course they're going to be used. I mean, it's like when, when I do an Egglock, even though it annoys the hell out of me that I get Lucario and Infernape over and over and over again, I mean, I know it's going to be sent because it's their popular Pokemon. So, I mean, if you don't like that, then play lower tiers. That's what I do. I personally don't care for OU. I didn't care for it last gen, even though my favorite Pokemon's there. Um, I just, I just, um, play lower tiers. Like, I really, really enjoy UU. I like UU more than OU. Even though for 6th gen so far, I've been doing a lot of OU, but I'm really trying to get back into UU like I was in 5th gen. So, if you don't like how the current tiers play, just choose a different tier. That's all it is. That's what it gets. Do you like the name Pedro? Um, when I was in Spanish class in like middle school, the teacher handed out names to everybody, and Pedro was actually my name in Spanish class. So, yeah. <laughs> so I guess it's it's whatever. Avery Kisser again. That's a name I've seen for a while now. Describe how college has been for you. Have you met any fine ladies in college? Uh, college has been great so far. I mean, I fucked up in a couple classes here and there, but I mean, college is school. <laughs> I mean, if you enjoy school, then you enjoy school. If you don't, then you don't. Will you bring back Bruce W. the champ? I mean, the the Eglot's over. <laughs> so I mean, I mean, maybe in the future, but I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Ricardo uh, Rebalo says, if Gengar got nerfed in power wise, would you still use him just for memory wise? Absolutely. He would just get dropped to a lower tier, and I'd play that tier and use Gengar, and it'd be great. Because then he'd get dropped to Yu Yu, and he'd wreck house there too. And I'd love it because I like Yu Yu. Matthew Proctor says, if Gengar was more bulky than it is offensive now, and that offensive side was taken away, would you still love as much as you do? Yes. Like, the fact that Gengar is a good Pokemon, stat-wise, is just a plus. Like, I like him for his design. He's, he's awesome, in my opinion. Dylan Sweat, or Sweet, says, who is your favorite character in Soul Eater? Easily Death the Kid. I love him. He's little, he's OCD like I am, and it's just his entire design is badass, and just everything about him I love. He's awesome. Xbox Buds 724 says, "What is your first gaming device?" Um, a PlayStation One. 1947 uh, RRW says, "What do you think about Mega Dragonite with Inner Focus or Moxie?" Um, I, I, I like multi scale better. <laughs> I like multi scale better. I'll just say that. Uh, cause I mean, you don't really need Moxie if you have Dragon Dance. I mean, Moxie is a plus. Um, like Moxie Dragon Dance Scrafty is nice, but at the same time. For Dragonite, I think giving him Moxie might be a little overpowered because the attack stat's already high enough as it is. And if you couple that with Dragon Dance, that would just be so much power. So I don't know if they'd actually give it to him. But I mean, I like multi skill. That's like what Dragonite's known for. Question When's the next Egglock? Jordan Francie. <laughs> uh, Friday, we'll talk about that. Swaggy Trainer says What is your opinion on Genesect The Mega Lucario have the probability of being banned? I think Genesect should go back to Ubers. I mean, if he stays OU, it's not going to be in the world, but I think he should go back to Ubers, and Meg Lucario should definitely be banned. Liam Dory, Friday man, Scratch Sheep is real, you know it. If it was a squirrel, would you play with my nuts? Oh my lord, you are hilarious, and I've never heard that before in my life. Boom boom. The Shadow Hog 759 says, What do you look for in a potential girlfriend? I know my boy Navi be getting all the ladies when he busts out his Pokemon skills in the club. I know, right? Um, what I look for in a potential girlfriend, um, this is not just for a girlfriend, but just people in general that I keep around me. Um, honesty and loyalty. Legit, that's it. That's, that's legit, that's all I look for in, like, friends, period. You know, if you're honest with me, if we, if we're, if we're, if we're supposed to be dogs, we're supposed to be homies or whatever, you should be able to come to me with anything. And if we're in a relationship, you should be able, you should literally be able to come to me with anything. And know that we're gonna be able to work through it in the end or whatnot. Um... So that's honesty, and I absolutely hate being lied to. I don't care if it's something as insignificant as like, I don't even know, I don't even know an example, it's just, you shouldn't have to lie to me. If we're cool and we're friends, you shouldn't have to lie to me. Um, loyalty in the sense that I know you're gonna be here with me, period. You know, I can tell you right now, I've, thankfully I've never been cheated on in my life, but if, if I was in a relationship with somebody and I cared about them a lot and I found out they cheated on me, there would be no going back. I would automatically just be done with them. Because that would legit just tear me apart. So, and again, when it comes to friends, loyalty, you know, in the sense, like, you better have my back, shit like that. If, if, if shit pops off, whatever, I expect you to be there with me. So, loyalty and honesty, that's just how it is. Super Muffin 203, what's your favorite antagonist group and favorite antagonist group boss? Um, Team Rocket and Giovanni. 
easily. Video Pulse says, or Video Pulse says, what other Pokemon types should be nerfed or buffed? I have no clue. I think everything's balanced as it is for now, so. I don't think Fairy should completely resist dragons. I guess that's one that you could say. I think they should be able to take hits well, but they shouldn't completely resist it. Sean Clark says, what is your favorite? Okay. <laughs> Zachary Frame says, this isn't about the question today. I wanted to see if you had any Aqua Gen Zoom. Wow, come on, man. Not gonna fall out. An awesome way to end this LP, Nappy. But anyway, my question is this. Are you working on any new music currently? I already talked about that kind of. I love your songs that Chad, uh, that Chad on the mixtape video you did a while back. They are so awesome. Well, thank you, sir. I'm glad you enjoy them. The Shadow Hog 759 says, What is your favorite grade? Example, first grade, second grade, etc. Probably ninth grade. Had a lot of fun in ninth grade. What's your favorite YouTuber? Um, Hoodlum Scrappy. Throw him out there. Callum. Callum! Mullick! Uh, Epic. Uh, wow, wow, wow. Epic. Epic Eminem fan. There we go. I think I, I think I got that right. Epic Eminem fan. Got a lot of a lot of letters right next to each other. A lot of E's. After this, like, do you have newfound respect for the Pokemon that you've used that you have rarely used? Um, I guess Scrafty. Matthew Damaco says, "What kind of series are you doing?" Oh my God! You guys just wait till Friday. Oh my Lord! Daniel Whitehurst says, "If you could use any three Pokemon moves in real life, what would they be?" Earthquake, Surf, and something else. Swaggy Trainer says, "Stress free." Damn right. Raikura18 says, "Love the Elite Four and gets his fights. So I was on the edge of my seat throughout both." What is your opinion on My Little Pony? Friendship is magic. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I know like the Brony culture and lifestyle is a big thing. I'm not like a Brony myself. I don't keep up with the show, but again, it's one of those things I don't hate on. There's no real reason for me to hate on it, so it's just there. Portonic Gaming, what is next for the channel? Stop it. Um, what was it like when Pokemon first came out? I mean, it was Pokemon. It was just brand new. It was awesome. Blue Ranger X11 says, "Have you played a Final Fantasy game before?" Of course. Final Fantasy is one of like the biggest game series of all time. Um, my favorite Final Fantasy game is Final Fantasy X. I played that the most. I never beat it, but I, I just loved it. Final Fantasy X was amazing in my opinion. Silver Sith says, "Nappy, what are your thoughts on same-sex marriage?" Just wondering. Uh, my opinion on same-sex marriage is kind of the same with everything. You know, it's like, it, I'm not really, like, for it. I'm not really against it. You know, I mean, I guess you could say I'm for it because I really don't care. I guess that's the best way, I guess you could describe it that way. Um, the way I see it is, if you enjoy spending time with somebody, by all means, go spend time with them. You know, it's not up to me or anybody else to decide who makes you happy. It's not up to me or anybody else that decides who you should take to your bed. You know, I, I don't think that's that should be decided by the government. And ultimately it isn't. I mean, you can do whatever you want. You know, America's a free country. But I don't see any sort of reason why people should be, like, not allowed to do it. I guess that's the best way I can describe it. Like I said, I'm not, like, for it. Like, I'm not about to go jump in a picket line and, like, protest the government or whatever bill or law that gets passed for or against same-sex marriage. But at the same time, I'm not against it. Like I said, you know, if, if you love somebody, who am I to jump in and impede on your happiness? You know, you do you. That's all I gotta say. You know, so I guess I guess that's a decent answer to it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Sir Anubis says, truth or ideals? Really, 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 really? Whichever one Zekrom is. There you go. Westfield Wrestlers says, what is the main purpose that you started and what keeps you going in the life of YouTuber? Please answer. It would mean the world to me. I already talked about what started, how I started. What keeps me going is just legit your guys' support and interaction. Like, if, if you guys weren't here, that's why I say all the time, like, this channel isn't just my channel, it's our channel. You know, if you guys didn't show the support that you did and uh, just the interaction with you guys, because there are like some subscribers through Twitter. Again, I keep talking about Twitter. If you guys are not following on Twitter, please go follow on Twitter. I would love to talk to you guys and meet you. The Omega meetups. Um, it's just it's just getting to know everybody. That's really what keeps me going. Castle Crashers 164 says, if you can get a new type, what it be called? What Pokemon Return of that type, etc. Light and sound. Light, no clue off the top of my head. Sound would be like X Cloud, Noivern, Chat Tot, shit like that. How old are you? How long have you been playing Pokemon? I already talked about that. What is the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you? Um, I kind of talked about that in Emerald and Platinum in the uh, episodes. I think we did an embarrassing one for both of them. Dark Eagle 780 says, Do you think of finishing the song Fallen anytime soon? Oh my god. <laughs> um, no clue when Fallen's going to get done. Like I, I already explained to you guys about music. Do you want to continue with your music? I already talked about that. <laughs> Why is water your favorite type? Sorry, these are dumb questions. Water's my favorite type because, um, just there's so many badass Pokemon that I like that are water type. You know, that's that's one reason. And number two, it's just like, 
it's it's just so effective. I just love water. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. Do you play and or watch any sports? What are sports? <laughs> um, I ran track when I was younger in high school, and I played soccer when I was in like elementary school. I don't watch any sports as of right now. I just it's not like again it's not one of those things where, where it falls in that category of like I don't hate on it, but I just don't like I don't keep up with it. So I'm a nerd. What can I say? Uh, that cool guy 23 says, "What change would you recommend to Dreano for the next game?" Um, I like to see Dreano like pair up with somebody else that like changes the region around. Like I don't know. I guess that would take some of the charm for away from Dreano hacks because Dreano is like known for making regular games harder. But I guess I'd like to see Dreano pair up with somebody that like makes a brand new game completely and have Dreano come in and just like do his own thing to the levels and everything and the changes. Next question comes from that we haven't already talked about. The cartoonist, if a new type was brought into the 7th gen metagame, what type would you want to be and why? What is the strength tweet? Oh, come on, man. Lava Fett Power. Scrotum got so many levels in that uh, from that first cricket tune. Well, of course, it's because of the, the experience codes, man. And Koga says, do you think opinions will ever be accepted on the internet? Hell no. <laughs> Sorry, lol. Real question. If could, would you change anything about Gengar or the whole family, or is he just perfect? Design-wise, he's perfect. Um, like I said, I already talked about his um, level up moveset and defenses and whatnot. Carney Caller, best region 136, already talked about that too. And Aromatist 666, for the new Super Smash Brothers that will be released aside from already listed characters, who would you like to see in the next game? I don't know, I'm not a huge Smash um, fan, I haven't really played it, like I played it when I was younger, but I don't really keep up with it, so I don't know, I can't answer that for you buddy. But with that, we are officially to the end of the video, we got through all the comments. There's not really 2,661 comments, there's like 1,300 or some shit like that. That's just uh, YouTube being dumb. But I'm sure some people have left comments since I started this. Uh, I feel kind of bad doing this uh, the same day that I uploaded it, but I gotta get it up tomorrow because we gotta move on! We gotta get the next project started. Um, I would have liked to give a lot more people time to get questions in, but we had plenty of enough questions because we're good two and a half hours into this, my lord, it's going to take forever to render and upload, god damn, might be up a little bit late, but still, if you guys watched all the way through here, I guess you could just like put the word purple in the comment section or some shit, just let me know that you watched all the way through, because the support is definitely appreciated, and uh, speaking of support, I mentioned it a couple times, answering the questions, I'm, I'm proud, I'm happy that you guys enjoy the content, I'm very, very humble that you do as well, um, I said in yesterday's episode of Blaze Black that this is the most successful series that we've ever done. You guys have just come out and shown support for it like no other. It's so humbling. It's so amazing. Um, I cannot wait to start the next series, and I can't wait to just do all this with you guys. You know, it's like I said. I'm just. I'm just. I've never been. I've never done this on YouTube before. I had this this much support. I'm getting my snowball rolling. I'm doing it. I'm just so happy that all of you guys are pushing the snowball there with me. It's just, like I said. It's it's amazing. It's humbling. It's awesome. But besides that, you guys, I answered all the questions. Even though I said I wasn't gonna do that, but I just. Figure, fuck it, let's do it. I answered a lot of questions, so if you enjoyed the entirety of this two and a half hour Q and A, <laughs> make sure you guys smash that like button down below because you already know that it is appreciated. And um, tomorrow is top five. Friday will be the update. Saturday and Sunday will probably just be Wi-Fi battles, even though people don't like them as much as other shit. And then next Monday, uh, we'll get started on the next projects. So, like I said, smash that like button for me if you haven't. And uh, of course, thank you for all your support. And thank you for checking out the video. My voice is shot. I'm going to go get something to drink. <laughs> but yeah, besides that, you guys, smash the like button before you haven't. All that good love to heavy bullshit. Thank you for checking out the video. You know me, YouTube, 992. I'm out.